Okay, it's, it's preparing to live stream now, so we should be good in a moment. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Kitsongs TV show PBS first season reunion. And of course, Kitsongs was the only show made by kids for kids and starring kids. I'm Jeffrey Clark, and I will be your moderator for this uh, reunion. I am the host of the podcast 90s Youth Life, and I was able to watch kids songs growing up and I have with me a whole bunch of people who were a heavy part of the kids songs TV show namely the cast and uh, some of the crew so I think uh, we will be happy to uh, uh, to uh, talk about your real stories with you. Uh, before we talk about uh, anything else um, I want to share a little something with you that will prove that I am a Kid Songs TV show fan, or at least I was at the tender age of five in 1994. Um, so I've got my uh, little share screen function right here. And um, I'm operating as a one man band here, just so you guys know. So if it seems like I'm not uh, acting totally professional here, um, uh, well, uh, that's why. But there is a uh, 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 there is a photo of me and uh, Billy Bigel. You know what? I'm gonna figure this out, and let's get an introduction to uh, everybody who is uh, with us. So, um, starting out, we have Christopher Aguilar, who was the writer of the Kid Songs TV show, at least in this fictional world. So, Chris, thank you for coming here. Yes, of course. I am so happy to be here. Hello, everybody. And Megan sends her love. Megan sends her love. That's right. Megan Miyahara uh, uh, was supposed to join us, but unfortunately, she had to back out at the very last minute um, because of, uh, well, we won't disclose the reasons here, but we hope that uh, she's, she's doing fine. And we will uh, hopefully get a chance to talk with her at some point down the line. So um, in addition to her, we've got Melanie Shale, the producer, uh, quote unquote, for the uh, Kid Songs TV show. And um, Melanie, how are you doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me. It's so uh, great to reconnect with everyone. Yeah, isn't it? Um, I should point out that uh, Chris and Melanie were the people who brought everybody together because I was on the outside looking in and I'm just a fan of the Kid Songs TV show. Um, but um, I think that... Uh, you know, you know, we should be grateful to them for allowing this to happen because I mean, because you know, everybody's got to know somebody somehow, right? And I just didn't know anybody except for Chris and uh, Hassan Nicholas because Hassan was on my podcast a few years back. Hassan, of course, was the technical director during this season of Kids Songs. Hassan, how are you doing? I'm uh, doing great. How's everyone? Glad to see everybody. Yeah, everybody is uh, doing fine, I think. Well, we'll get into uh, all of that. Um, and then we have our hair, makeup, and wardrobe artist, Katie Polk, right there in the middle, if uh, you could see her. Uh, Katie, thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to see everyone. It really is a pleasure to uh, see you here. Um, we also have our uh, stage manager slash camera operator, Mark Humphrey, right there up in the uh, corner. So, uh, Mark, thank you for coming in. Yeah, I'm really glad to see everybody. It's been a very long time, and uh, everybody looks the same. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, because Mark had a beard in 1994. Oh, yeah, Totally. <laughs> Very young age. The, the only uh, the only person in uh, in history to uh, have a beard at the age of what 10, 11. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, we also have uh, we have both of our co-hosts here. Uh, with, first, we have Christian Buenaventura. Uh, but Christian, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. It's very yeah, very nice to see everybody. It's been a long time. Yes, absolutely. And then, and then, of course, we have our other co-host. You knew her, Alexandra Palm, but she's now Alexandra. Olivia. Hi. I hope I'm saying that right. Olivera. 
Yeah, great. Your audio is working right. Alex was having uh, audio issues earlier, but I'm glad she got that fixed before we uh, went on. And, and then uh, last but not least, at least for the uh, time being, because you might have a couple more people joining us a little bit. Uh, we have our uh, your uh, hairdresser, uh, Yvonne. Is that right? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hey, yeah, Yvonne. I'm going to step in here for this show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eva was kind of a last minute addition to our uh, to our reunion. I'm grateful that she was able to uh, join us. Um, again, we send our love to Megan Miyahara, and I hope she's watching. I hope that uh, it's too bad that she couldn't join us. And oh, 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 man, we have the uh, the person who is responsible for Kit Songs entering this room right now. So uh, let's give a big hand without further ado to the one, the only Carol Rosenstein. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Carol. Hi. Uh, oh, look at everyone. So, <laughs> so if any of you out there have ever liked anything to do with kids' songs, then this is the woman who is responsible for, for your childhood memories right here. Certainly responsible for mine and responsible for making all of these kids uh making their lives a whole lot better so so carol i think if i had time we should be thanking you for everything that you and bruce uh, uh have done for us over these past several years well hopefully i we didn't traumatize you all and scar your child <laughs> and you have a fortune on therapy ever since to recover from it <laughs> so i've always wondered what it was really like to be a kid's house kid you know from your guys perspective yeah, well, well, like I said before, we'll uh, we'll get into uh, all of that uh, later on once I can figure out my uh, my share screen function. We'll uh, we'll figure all of that out. Uh, yeah. I think Chris has something to say here. Uh, just letting you know, the live chat isn't working, Jeffrey. But don't worry about it because you have a lot in your plate right now. But um, it's not working. But if there's like a certain switch that you can do so we could have the live chat going on, that would be great. But if not, no worries. If not. Yeah, well, well, people are leaving comments below, I'm sure. So um, I, don't, I don't think we have to worry about that too much. So um, I think, uh, you know, Carol, we'll, we'll start with you. Um, since since this whole thing comes comes back to you, um, that you knew about this whole thing from the inside, I guess the first thing I should ask, uh, in your own words, how did the whole Kid Songs franchise come about? And I, I've heard the story before, but I'd like to hear from your uh, perspective. Um, well, it was a two-pronged thing. Uh, Bruce and I had done, you know, about 300 real music videos for big acts, right? And as time went on, they became more and more difficult to work with, right? First, they're all happy to have a video, and then all of a sudden, you know, as they become more and more famous, they became more and more of a handful. So I was working tons of hours, and I had my little girl, Katie, and when I would come home and I needed to make dinner or do something, there was no kids programming on, and she didn't like animation. So I suddenly thought, but she loved music. So she was the inspiration. So I thought, what if we make music videos of Old McDonald Had a Farm and things like that, that we could have on the VHS because the VCR had just come out, then parents could play it when they needed it. Right, because you know, I needed it more at dinner time, or if I needed to take a phone call, I, I wanted to be able to play something for my daughter, but there was no kids programming on in the evening. So based on our music video experience uh, and our relationships with record companies, we went to Warner Brothers Records with the idea of let's do music videos for kids. And they loved the idea. Um, and it was a whole business plan that we had done and a whole idea of how to distribute it and get it into stores and how to promote it. You know, and I had the idea of having the toy company be a partner so they could get it in toy stores and that Warners could get it into record stores. So I we worked on the whole business plan idea, but the whole idea was based on um, having what we now all take for granted, which is video on demand when you need it. And the other thing was children's music was awful. When I grew up, I listened to Burl Ives, who's actually I respect, but you know, the Weavers and this bunch of artists. And when Katie was a baby, I went to Tower Records and it was the same records. It was the records from the forties and fifties that my parents bought and played to me and my brother and sister in the fifties and sixties. Like nothing had 
progressed in kids' music. So we just saw an opportunity to make better kids' music and then to use what we knew from music videos to make good videos of them. So that's, that's the whole story. Yeah, well, I guess somebody had to bring children's music into, uh, I, I guess, what was then the 1980s. So, uh, but by the way, I, I think I finally figured it out so the whole uh, share screen function. So let me show you the, uh, the proof that I was a, uh, a kid songs fan growing up. You see that? So the, the story behind this is I was uh, six years old, so I've been watching kids songs for a year at this point. Um, and I, I just, my mom's camera happened to be on the coffee table, which is actually, or the table, which I'm actually sitting at right now. Um, and I just picked up the camera and I just, I was like, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know why I decided to take this picture because I, I was like six years old. So I decided uh, I was going to take a picture of the TV and I'd done it once before. This is my, my second time doing that. And if you look closely at the bottom right there, you, you can't see it very well, but you kind of see the Kid Songs logo blurred there towards the bottom right there. That is actually a copy of the only Kid Songs video that I had, the Play Along Songs video, which uh, Christian, you were in, and Katie, you were in. Um, so, um, and, and there's another uh, interesting tidbit. Uh, that was actually the, uh, the last photo that was ever taken inside of our house before we moved. So uh, I was... Uh, actually responsible for uh, that little tidbit of our family history. And, um, uh, and you know, that house unfortunately isn't there anymore, but uh, it, just be happy you guys got to uh, uh, see me in my uh, old house, at least through that screen, even though we couldn't uh, interact. So uh, so that's the story of, uh, of that photo uh, right there. So um, that, as long as we're on the uh, subject of the uh, TV stuff, uh, Carol, I'm going back to you once again. Um, you know, after a couple of years, um, you and Bruce decided that it was time to make a TV show. And uh, I guess this is actually a, a two-part question. First of all, why do these, the first Kid Songs video sell so well, in your opinion? And uh, what, what, uh, what made you decide that uh, a TV show uh, was appropriate to put out? Um, I think it sold so well uh, because we had... Uh, distribution from both the record company and a toy company. We were the first one out there and the toy company, which was Viewmaster, promoted it and Parents Magazine with full page ads and all that, but they had a relationship with Toys R Us and Toys R Us gave us end caps in every store. They put in a video player, um, a VCR and a TV, which was all very new at the time. And then they had the full column of the Kid Songs videos. We'd made a bunch of them. And then they um, played a continuous loop for two hours of kids songs in the stores. And I think just the quality of the videos, you know, how good the kids were, how good the music was, how good, you know, Bruce's direction was and everybody else, the whole team's effort because Yvonne's makeup and hair. I think that's the real reason it was so successful, but no, it just, um, people saw it. The kids gravitated to it. Kids wanted to see it over and over again. And I think the product just sold itself. And then we did the Kids Songs TV show to, because you know, it was doing well, it was making money. So I was able to talk the partners into putting together the, you know, funding a TV show, uh, which was pretty inexpensive in the first TV show. It wasn't elaborate like the ones that you guys were in. It was just a top 10 countdown show. So we did that one based on Casey Kasem's top 10. And that one we just cranked out really quick, you know, a few shows a day, uh, made the 26 of them. And we sold it in syndication. So it paid for itself pretty quickly. And it was just a great promotional device, you know, for the videos. Yeah, absolutely. Now, how did this particular show, Carol, how did it be, uh, the genesis for what was the last few years later? The, the PBS show? Yeah, but like, how did it sow the seeds for the uh, for what came a few years later on PBS? Hold on, my parrot is joining the conversation. Let me let her out of her cage. Hold on. All right. Well, well, she's taking care of that. Yvonne, let me ask you about it. Since you were on this from the uh, the beginning, uh, what was your uh, memory during those first few years of Kids Songs, including the first TV show? Oh my goodness. Well, the very, very first kids songs was Old MacDonald and it was just, it was my first big deal. And Carol is such a, you know, she collaborates. It's not like 
here, you got to do this or do this. So I was given free reign. And a lot of times people would say, oh, the worst thing in the world in the business, don't work with kids and animals. And that's kid songs in a nutshell. Every single show, every day we shot, there were kids and animals and craziness and it just worked every day. Uh, Carol and I talked about this last night, how incredible it was of an experience that was a shared experience and a lot of loving kindness in a wild environment because we did have kids and and animals all the time and um the kids were all amazing most all of the parents were all fabulous we just kind of had this wonderful experience when we went to work and that was the very first time um I designed all this makeup for Andre, our choreographer, who I love dearly. And he was just open. Everybody was open. It was a very open experience, open for collaboration, open for ideas. The kids got to share ideas along with being managed. You know, it was kind of all done in a really um, familial way, which was really comfortable to me. Um, and the kids songs uh, TV show, uh, Chris just pulled out a picture of him in the makeup room with me doing him and he's got my son in his lap. So, you know, I mean, it's the greatest thing in the world. And, you know, I've known Katie since she was a toddler. And so, and all these other kids, we all grew up together by doing all of these incredible shows. And it was a blast because you know, Pat Naderhoff was our costume designer and she was always coming up with these amazing nonstop things for the kids. And I had to come up with ideas to go with the hair. And it just was a really amazing, fun experience. So the success of the show is really the brilliance of how it got presented also. And I love that it was set up as a plan, but it also took off and had a life of its own because I think Carol's right. There was nothing for kids other than Disney movies and a few other things. And you couldn't let your kids watch MTV then because it was too crazy. So um, I love the idea. I didn't even know that story till Katie and then Carol uh, told it today that Katie did not like animation and um, and she loved music. So it's just that, you know, our inspirations come from all of those kind of things. So it was quite an amazing experience. Um, seeing everybody here, like, you know, I've seen Alex over the years on sets and other places. So it's kind of remarkable to see everybody because I just loved all the kids. It was not a, ever a bad experience for me. Bring more animals, bring more kids. It was the best thing ever, so. All right, Carol, let me, let me go back to uh, what you were trying, I was trying to ask you before your bird interrupted. Uh, how, uh, how did the first edition of the Kids Songs TV show, the one that aired in the 80s, how did that uh, pave the way for the show that came in the 90s? Barrett's still joining the conversation, but I'm really dying to hear from all the kids. But briefly, you know, that show ran for six years, right? It ran for, uh, two, actually it ran, yeah, it ran two years in syndication, four years on the Disney Channel, and then it was just time to do something new. And we want, and we had a lot more videos to show off than we did in the first group, where we'd only done a few videos. And then we decided to uh, that PBS would be the perfect partner. And when we met with PBS and looked over the guidelines for the excellence in children's broadcasting and all these guidelines at the time, they wanted a certain amount of pro-social content, a certain amount of educational, a certain amount of um, you know, developmental stuff. So once we understood what PBS required, we then went back and thought about, okay, how do we do that in the kids songs way? So having the kids working together in the studio, having them do stuff, you know, there's shows where they're involved with making the studio greener, which is crazy when you think how long ago that was, uh, you know, and starting a recycling, you know, program at the studio and helping kids with, there'd been a disaster in the neighborhood and, you know, 
it, it kind of, um, I just had to sort of keep looking every week at those requirements and think, okay, what can I teach in a kid's song's way? Oh, we can have a fireman as a guest and we, even though we only have one song about a fireman, but we can still make the show about safety or we can make the show about teamwork or we can make the show about someone's feelings got hurt or about disappointment. So I had to weave into those shows, um, those things. And I had a wonderful consultant at UCLA, uh, Dr. Gordon Berry. And then I could call him and say, hey, you know, I think I want to deal with, you know, a kid feeling left out or something. What's a way to do this, you know, in a kind way that's developmentally valid. And he would give me guidance and then I would just crank them out, and, you know, and write them. But I'm dying to hear from the kids. <laughs> All right, I just, uh, I just have one more question for you, Carol, and this is just something that you know I'm personally curious about. Um, you, you did uh, t uh, make this in conjunction with the National Television Production Center for the PBS affiliate in Chicago, uh, WTTW Window to the World, for those of you who don't know. Um, so how exactly did WTTW factor into it? Because as a kid, I always wondered why, why the PBS affiliate in Chicago was listed in the credits at the, at the end of it. Um, to do a PBS show at the time, I don't know if it's still that way, you have to be in partnership with a PBS television station. And at the time, there was only a handful of them who actually were involved in production. KCT in LA, Boston, New York, Chicago, I think Miami, there's only a handful. So we met with different stations and the people at PBS in Chicago, TTW, were very, very supportive. So they brought marketing and the know-how of how to promote it within the PBS um, station relationships. They work with the station managers to get us good time slots, work out promotions, work out special things. And then they kind of held our hand through the whole PBS labyrinth. And it is a, the most confusing labyrinth. It is not a business. It is a maze. And so they were great. But we were the thing that we were incredibly fortunate about that in terms of my long careers has really never happened again is TTW were like, well, you make the program. So you guys know what you're doing. And Warner Brothers Records and the toy company said the same thing. So really we had the opportunity to make the show we wanted to make with the team that we wanted. And really, I don't think out of the you know, 106 television shows, 24 videos, I think close to 300 songs, Nobody told us what to do, you know, and we just did what we wanted to do. And it was, and people, it, we came into it with these people, you know, Warner Brothers, who was the original funder, they treated us like a recording artist. They respected what we had done in music videos and they treated us the way they treated an artist. Go do your thing. We're here to back you up. And, t and the to toy company wasn't gonna, you know, say anything about production. And TTW was very deferential, you know, because we had good credit. So really we could work with our team um, and do what we wanted to do, you know, and it was an, an incredibly, incredibly special experience. So it, it means a lot to us. Bruce is going to join too. We'll have to take turns because I just went to pick up a new rescue puppy and I've got one dog in here and he's got the new dog and we haven't gotten to introduce them yet because I got stuck in traffic for three hours picking up this dog. But so we'll trade, he'll say hi at the end after I get to hear what the kids have been doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, I have a friend who was stuck in, who, who worked in traffic for years and he always monitored Los Angeles traffic. So um, I think uh, I think I know exactly what you're talking about. And I, it's probably not even better during this pandemic. But on that, uh, let's finally hear from uh, from the kids. Um, uh, so I guess that what we should talk about first is, uh, you know, the audition process for the, uh, for the kids songs uh, TV show. Now, uh, some of you, from what I understand, don't remember all of it, but um, I do have one uh, little piece of uh, information here that might be of interest to you. So I'm going to do my uh, my share screen function once again, and and again I'm I'm operating on uh, one thing right here. So does, does this look familiar to any of you? And th this right here, uh, Chris shared some of the stuff with me. This is the. Uh, I guess uh, at least part of the uh, audition piece for the uh, the Kid Songs TV show. So, uh, the, you know, Chris, you shared this with me. Uh, what do you remember about this? 
this, the funniest thing um, is that I remember the office building that I auditioned for. It was on Wilshire because I, is that maybe right, Carol? Because I, I ended up working in that same office building when I was in my late 20s which is really crazy that I, that I came full circle to that building. If it was, hopefully it was. But anyway, I remember being in the office space and it was like a conference room and I had to read those sides for Carol and probably for somebody else. And uh, I just remember reading those sides. That's all I remember being in that office space. And I remember the office building being the same one that I worked in later on, so. Yeah, we were, we were in a building on Wilshire then and Variety was downtown, downstairs. We were above Variety. Yeah. 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 The one that comes from the tar pits, right? Yeah. Near the, near the tar pits. Yeah. 5700 Wilshire. Yep. Yeah. So I ended up working there. So I was like, well, this is so full circle. This is weird. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. So did you audition uh, one person at a time, two people at a time? Because the script calls for, for two people uh, talking back and, and forth, or did somebody prompt you? Or like, like what does anybody remember about the uh, audition process? Yeah, I'll pass it to anybody else. Anybody remember their audition? Melody, I know you said in uh, Chris's podcast that you don't remember. Yeah, Christian, Alex, you ended up getting the host. Do you remember? You know, uh, just just from what what Chris was saying, I now I do remember, and I remember going into because my mom was parking, and this was we've never been to this place before, so. Uh, and that everything's kind of like coming into me um, right now. But uh, what I did remember is that it was, we weren't, it, it was different because I thought we were gonna do the another video. I was just, cause we, me and, and a couple of uh, like Alex and, and Megan and Katie, we were always doing videos and this was kind of a different audition. Uh, where we usually go to a, to a dance studio, we would go to Debbie yeah. Reynolds or, or Screenland or, or something where we would learn how to do a, do a dance and do a video. So this was kind of different. And so it was a little bit foreign to me when, when we got to the place. I'm like, this is, this is something that uh, I wasn't even prepared for. But we, we did the sides and uh, yeah, no, it was, it was nerve wracking because it was more of an acting thing rather than a dancing thing in in my experience. And very, very nice. So um, so it eventually got whittled down to uh, you uh, to 11 people uh, who made the final cut. And you know, we've got seven here. And, and by the way, we should probably should uh, mention the other uh, three cast members that we were not able to find who uh, who made the cut. Uh, Janet Bates, Kevin Williamson, and uh, Janessa Beth Ray. So uh, if you guys are watching, uh, uh, you know, no, we're, we're sorry you couldn't be here, but um, you know, we hope that you guys are doing well wherever you are. So um, you know, once you finally had the uh, the cast set, um, you know, it was time to uh, get into production. And uh, you know, Christian actually, uh, Chris, uh, Chris rather, uh, showed me a, a couple more uh, interesting uh, tidbits from. Uh, uh, well, because well, uh, we were talking earlier before we went on, you said that you, your, your mom had saved a, a couple of the, uh, the scripts for uh, for the Kid Songs uh, TV show. So um, here's a little uh, tip. I don't, I don't know if this has ever been seen publicly before, but here is the cover of the uh, Kid Songs TV show script. Mm -hmm. now, see you're loving that. Just look at that right now. So You kept it's everything, Chris. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty amazing yeah. <laughs> yeah you have to thank my mom she's watching right now so thank you mom for saving all the stuff yeah so so yeah maybe yeah, carol's name yeah, we have all of them <laughs> all yeah yeah you can see chris's name there in the upper right hand uh corner of the screen so um that's how uh that, that's how that uh came about and then uh in addition to the uh uh, to the uh, uh, the cover of the script, he showed me uh, if I if I can pull this up here, he showed me uh, at least the first page of the show rundown. So um, let's take a let's take a look at that right here. I can uh, like I said, I'm operating uh, as a one man band here, so sorry if it's slow. So um, but yeah, you know, I say went to school for broadcasting and uh, you know, when I was looking at news particular, I could see that uh, every 
every segment of the show was was uh, times down the second. So um, and uh, this is very interesting. Um, every episode, from what I've seen, because like I said before, I watched every episode, and every episode was timed down to roughly twenty eight minutes and forty seconds. Um, now, does anyone know? Remember why uh, it was? Why it was the exact time which to fill up the the time slot that PBS was was providing you, or, or what? Yeah, it was a thirty minute show, and they would take um, a minute twenty for promos, and so we delivered twenty eight forty, and then they fill up the other minute twenty. You always, whenever you're doing a TV show, you have a delivery requirement for time. Um, you know, on a network show, there's way more commercials, so you're coming in several, you know, several more minutes under. But that you know, PBS has very few commercials, and the rundown will also show no commercial breaks. So if you looked at one from a, the syndicated show, you'd see the commercial breaks, and you'd see a lot more commercial time. Right. So um, no. So you guys started shooting it now. Um, I guess um, did, did you guys shoot the uh, the introduction uh, first, like the, the theme song first, or did you shoot an episode first? Uh, what, like what was the production, or was it? Like you shoot a few episodes and then then do the theme song. Uh, uh, shoot. I, I have no idea. Does anyone remember when we shot the opening title sequence? I don't remember. I remember. I remember draw, uh, drawing it. So I remember. Oh, yeah. I remember writing. Oh, that was you writing out the the yeah. kid songs. I remember handwriting the kid. I remember. I, I must have been the, I mean, it had to have been before the first episode and, you know, we just did a quick take and, you know, we did it somewhere and, you know, getting all that, you know, opening title stuff together and, and, you know, did the, we just took a piece of construction paper and some markers and did the, for the kid songs logo. I think we, what we did was we shot the little, I think Bruce and I camera scripted it. I'm gonna go rescue, take the rescue dog for him so he can join. But I think that we camera scripted all the scenes to be in it and then picked them up when we were shooting other stuff, I think. And then we yeah. put it together. We did some of those things on days we were actually filming. Yeah. There little snippets here and the little snippets there the running and all of that outside was um, more detailed we didn't just catch and run on that but you know and the other stuff of coming into the studio and them discovering and everything was those were all snippets we shot but that's the best of my memory but uh you know the other stuff like katie with the drawing we, we did that when we were there actually yeah, when we started right. filming right yeah. and i remember like there's certain parts I remember super vividly, like the, you know, the, the running and being, and like the, the colors, I don't know what they were, the paper and like getting those shots. It's really strange that are such like vivid memories of like getting those specific shots. I mean, there's parts I are gone, but <laughs> I remember certain <laughs> parts of that so clearly that it's so strange. Does anyone else remember shooting that stuff? I. I yeah. definitely. Oh, oh go ahead. Sorry, Christian. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I, I definitely <laughs> do that. We, we shot the, because I, because I was, a, I want to say I was a fan of the show in the 80s. So I watched it on Disney. So, so I knew when we were, because we shot it after we shot the whole series, we did shoot all those other things. I remember the shirt I was wearing and everything. And we shot all the like, you know, finding the studio, getting the studio prepared for our show. We did all those after. And I remember, and, and you can see it in some of the shots, I, I knew that the theme song would be playing over those shots. So while we were filming, I, I, was, lip, I was lip syncing the song, thinking <laughs> that I would, I would match whatever, I just, I, I felt like I was ahead of the game. Like I knew what we were doing. <laughs> So I was like lip syncing while we were filming those spots. So that's my memory of, of, of filming the theme song, which I'll is- I'll have to look at it again because I don't think a lot of it was lip sync, but I'll have to look at it. But it wasn't. I wasn't supposed to be lip syncing. That's the thing. I wasn't supposed to be lip syncing. That's the funny part of that story. Yeah. But Christian, how about you? Yeah, just to, to piggyback of what you were saying, uh, because I've seen the show uh, in its first iteration, that I we we I kind of I think we knew we were in that that same shot in in the beginning, and uh, yeah, and so I do remember that, and I kind of had that same that same uh, experience where we're 
it's like, oh yeah, this is this is exactly what they did in in the first iteration of it. Uh, so I do remember that, and I do remember that I think we we shot the pilot first. So the 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 reason I remember is because I saw when I we uh, rolled that first uh, the theme song. I see my hair, my haircut was a bowl, like a full bowl, which wasn't the full bowl once we did the first episode. So um, yeah, so that's what I remember. That, I think that was, we, we shot the pilot and we shot the, the theme song when we did the pilot. And then I think we came back however long it was, a month or um, to shoot the rest of the episodes once once we got it going. Now, Hassan, you, when you were on my podcast, uh, you, you know, you told me about you shooting this because, um, you know, you were of only four people in the shot. You told me that uh, it was, uh, you guys shot this at 6.30 in the morning because I was like, oh, it seems like kind of overcast out. So I wonder when they shot this. You told me that it was, it was at like 6.30 in the morning. So um, I just find very, that very interesting. And uh, Hassan, do you remember how many times you guys had to run uh, up to the studio? I'm sure you got a good workout in that day. Yeah, I mean, knowing us several times, you know, and I think I was wearing like boots. I was always in boots. So wardrobe lady always putting me in boots, which is not the easiest to run in. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, but I remember doing like several takes, uh, you know, running down this kind of blocked off street or whatever uh, early in the morning. Usually like all of our, our call time started off early in the morning. So we were, you know, accustomed to getting up early. Uh, so that was just part of part of the life. But yeah, I mean. On average, we're gonna do at least like four takes of that, you know, running up and down. But I mean, at at that point in time, it was just it was just all fun. Uh, I think all of us could agree it was just it wasn't even like work. It was just like you know, really enjoying what we're doing. Yeah, Chris has stepped out for just a moment, but he he will be back. Uh, but um, it's it's actually very interesting that the uh, that the theme song is is pretty much uh, everything that goes into uh, creating a television show. I mean, unless you've unless you've actually been there on the inside of uh, uh, creating a TV show, you don't really know how it goes on. So, um, uh, how did you how did uh, everybody uh, get the shots in for? Uh, you know, when, when you're like collecting the, uh, I, I don't know, you're you're putting the set together, you were uh, unveiling the consoles. Um, you know, what was shooting all that like? Because I mean, you know, we just talked about the opening uh, uh, shot of the uh, theme song, but the rest of it was everyone just you know putting everything together. So, was does anybody remember anything about uh, those shots, Katie? I know you talked about the uh, writing out the the word kids songs. What does anybody else remember about that? Um, I kind of vaguely remember standing on the ladder and I think I was catching a piece of lighting equipment and also doing the whole stage manager. I remember doing this like several times. Uh, I think I nailed it eventually, but, um, yeah, I totally remember like standing on that, on the, that ladder. And I think it was like, it was while we were shooting some other things or it was when we had downtime, they, they shot a couple of those. And, you know, now I look at that and I'm just like, man, that looks dangerous <laughs> standing up on that ladder. <laughs> I don't know if they'd allow that today, but but guys, we actually do have a another person entering right now. It is the uh, the other half of the person that the team that make kids songs possible. There he is, the one and the only Bruce Gowers. Hi. <laughs> so Bruce, welcome to the uh, welcome to the chat here. Well, it's good to see you all. My God, look at how many people have we got here. Um, well, we've got uh, seven cast members. We we had eight, but uh, Megan uh, dropped out at the uh, at the last minute. I'm sorry to say, but um, uh, yeah, yeah I'm sh I think she's watching right now. So, uh, but once again, hi to her. I, I know we're we're kind of making her a star with her not being here, but um, but you know, I, I guess these things kind of tend to happen. So, um, uh, so Bruce, how are you uh, doing? I'm glad you're able to join us. I'm okay, except I I pulled a. Uh, uh, a thing in my heel. I'm not sure, the Achilles heel, the, the tendon. Oh. So I'm kind of limping around, unfortunately. Oh, is that why the the canes in the background uh, right there? What? Is that why the canes in the background right there? <laughs> because you well, say you. Yeah, I think Carol was in her office talking to you guys. Yeah. All right. All right. So, uh, uh, so 
Bruce, um, it, you know, yeah, I'm just going to divert away from the conversation for just a moment, um, you know, because you're first here. I just want to get this off the bat, and I swear this is the only uh, question I'm going to ask you that has nothing to, to do with kids' songs. Uh, it, it, given your, given everything that has happened uh, to you uh, since then, um, are you still, or are you amazed that an iconic video like Bohemian Rhapsody jump-started your career, and did you ever think that it would take off like it did? No, I had no idea at all. Well, that's wonderful because I because I looked at your background and I was like, oh my gosh, this guy has uh, directed pretty much everything for uh, for the past uh, fifty years. All these uh, the big recording artists and I'm like, I, I don't know if I've ever interviewed with somebody with your background before. American Idol. I mean, you know, the list of uh, of recording artists goes on. But um, I, I just want to get uh, your perspective. I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked Carol uh, earlier, Bruce. Um, what do you remember about the whole uh, kid songs thing starting? Well, I don't, rem I don't remember a lot, but I looked at a bunch of the, the shows last night mm -hmm. and I was, I was actually blown away how good they really are. They really are amazing. Oh, that's, that's wonderful to hear. Um, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to just say one more thing about the uh, theme song, then I'm going to play it, because, because Carol, you weren't here at the start. Uh, we, we, we were playing it for our, our first take, but I realized it wasn't streaming live, so, um, so nobody saw that, but we'll play that again in just a moment. I'm sorry to the rest of you for having to watch it again, but I want to get that in there. But, um, you know, the very last shot it was everybody on, on the set going, we want them. Uh, does anybody remember, uh, remember that part? Chris definitely remembers it. Yeah, that was that's iconic. I yes. mean, from from the first <laughs> from the first season, from the first one on Disney, for me to be, I, it was a huge moment for me when I got to do the I want them like thumb thing. For me, it was huge. It was like the world. I was like, oh my god, I get to do the thumb thing. <laughs> All right. Well, well, um, on that, uh, I think uh, that was a good time to uh, show everyone what we're talking about. I'm sure the people who are watching here know what we're talking about, but on the off chance that anyone hasn't uh, seen this, I'm going to play it again. This, this is the second time that we're seeing it, but it's the first time the YouTube audience is seeing it. So, uh, so here it is. And might I add, we have like 19 people watching us right now, y'all, which is pretty oh, cool. Very nice. <laughs> Where, where's the right, where's the right audio? There you go. Uh, very, a very uh, interesting uh, topic. Um, it, it actually, uh, Chris has opened the uh, chat here because uh, everyone, uh, because everyone can type in here. Um, this is, it's actually for uh, Alexandra. Um, he's asking if you were in the pilot. Hi. Hi. Yeah, yeah. So, so were you in the pilot of the uh, episode? That's what uh, that's what Chris wanted to know. Um, yeah, I was in first the videos and then we auditioned and we got cast as the co-host and then I did the pilot and I think two seasons. 
Yes, you did two seasons. What, and we'll get into uh, all that as we go on. But, uh, but let's get let's uh, talk about what everyone really wants to uh, know about, and that, and that is the uh, the stuff from uh, uh, behind the scenes. So, so but again, let's recap what everybody here was, was doing uh, at the time. Uh, Alex and Christian, you were the uh, co-host. Chris was the writer. Mark uh, was the uh, the stage manager, and then the camera person. Uh, Melanie, you, you were the uh, producer. Hassan was the technical director. Katie was the uh, hair, makeup, and wardrobe person. And uh, I, I want to, uh, I've been waiting to share this. Uh, uh, Chris, I kind of told you about this when we were uh, preparing for it. I said there's a, a cute quote from Melanie and a story from a uh, Billboard magazine. <laughs> and at the very lead of the, show, of, the uh, of the story, she says that I'm the producer. And when she was asked what she does yeah. with her songs, uh, she says, I fire people. If they, and they keep on saying I want money, I don't give it to them. <laughs> Melanie. <laughs> You remember saying that at all? Well, now that you bring it up, yes, I do. Oh my god, I was such a brat. I don't, I don't remember who interviewed me or why I said that, but yeah, that's hilarious. I, I was probably joking. I was joking. That's the example I set for you. I fired people. Yeah. I, I thought yeah. I fired any. It was a couple of. Kids I was taking my cue from you. Care. Who did I fire? There were, there were a couple of kids who didn't cut it over the years, not you guys, but there were a couple who weren't asked back, but we, you know, we weren't big on firing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Deborah Russell. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So um, I, I don't know if she's watching, but shout to her if uh, if, if she is. Um, but um, it, it says also in the story that, that Bruce, you were the uh, eye behind the uh, series because you know you, you were the uh, director for this. Um, th you were asked about this apparently, and you said, "I guess she nailed that one." <laughs> so, but uh, you know, even though Kevin was the uh, the actual director, well, well the uh, director in front of the camera, you were the actual director, and it talks about uh, how how your voice uh, typically went out over the, uh, the the loudspeaker in the studio. Do you remember uh, anything about that? Do I re remember? Yeah do, you, yeah, do you remember giving out orders to... Uh, no, I don't. I don't re remember much about the show at all. <laughs> they, except well, it, except it, it was a lot of hard work. It really was. Mm -hmm. but, but when I see it now, I'm actually blown away. I, I saw, I think, like two episodes last night. And I said to Carol, this is too good. It really was so good. I couldn't believe it. Well, you know, I was talking with my mom about this uh, last night, and she was like, the one thing that she really enjoyed about kids' songs, Bruce, is that, um, you know, it, it didn't feel like one of those, uh, like, like, really hyper shows or shows that kind of talks down to kids, because they actually did talk about a lot of the issues that Carol was mentioning earlier, you know, teamwork, self-esteem, uh, responsibility, uh, all that stuff. Uh, but, um, it, it, you know, it, it is really interesting that uh, people would... Uh, you know, watch something because it didn't, uh, it didn't feel like uh, they were being talked down to. So, um, but you know, you guys were the ones that had to deliver these lines about uh, all these issues. So um, did it ever feel like you were just reading lines or did you actually feel something about these uh, issues that were being brought, uh, these, these uh, childhood uh, type issues? Well, that's, that's a Carol question. <laughs> I'll, I'll throw that one to the kids. You know, I, I want to know how the kids felt being Kid Songs kids. And one question that I'm dying to know, for those of you who have kids, and if you don't have kids, I assume you have nieces and nephews, do you show yourself in Kid Songs to your kids or yeah. to your nieces and nephews? And what do they think when they see you being a kid because they think of you as a grown-up? I, I can go first with that. I try to show my kids um kid songs and i think anything that i particularly want to show them they're not very interested they see it and i think they know they think that's them that are on the video and then it's like oh that's me and, and they don't think any, they're two and three so um <laughs> yeah it's uh i tried to and and uh but it's, they, they love it they love it they uh actually we were playing the theme song and and my uh, three-year-old was dancing to it so uh -huh. yeah 
That's cute. No, um, actually, this story that I have right here actually does kind of answer the question that I was kind of uh, going for just a minute ago. Uh, Carol, you say here in this story that I write for them, so I know what they're going to say, and we give them lines. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It was Bruce who said that uh, we give them lines we've said in the past, and we'll put little mistakes to the show, goops, and things that occur on every production. So um, that, I really thought that adds to the uh, authenticity of it. Do you, do you feel like that uh, – were you trying to make sure that uh, – that the show wasn't coming off as too polished because, you know, after all, these are kids making a TV show. So, so we try and make sure that, what was it your way of showing that, you know, mistakes do happen during a production, especially when you're uh, kind of inexperienced? Well, we wanted it to feel like natural kids. And so I would write dialogue, but then I would go over with, with the kids. And then I would quickly change it. If it wasn't rolling off their tongue or words were, you know, problematic or it just didn't feel right, you know, it might felt right when I wrote it. But if it didn't feel right coming out of the kid's voice, then we would change, you know, we just change it on the spot. And, you know, they'd say, can I... And it was very open. They'd say, can I say it like this? And I'd say, sure. You know, as long as they were furthering the story, you know, we would make those adjustments and we would have rehearsal. So once I would see how it would go in rehearsal, then I would make those changes and then reissue the script. And usually, you know, they, they were short scenes. The kids were all great. They were all prepared. They knew their stuff, you know, and it, 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 and it worked. I mean, one thing that I learned about the kids' songs, kids, because we would cast them based on how they audition. But over time, I realized it was, you know, a room full of A-plus students and gifted students for the most part. You know, the ones who could cut it and handle that demand, do stuff in a couple of takes, learn their lines, they were all, they were all smart, you know. And um, I, I think that that is part of what made it so easy. And we tried to make it an environment where they could, you know, tell us, you know, if stuff didn't work. I'm sure it was still intimidating being a kid song's kid and having pressure and the timetable of doing, you know, two shows a day and trying to get all this stuff done. I'm sure the kids felt some pressure, but we tried to make it a really kid friendly, kid fun, kid centric environment. Yeah, let's talk about those uh, two episodes a day. Because it says right here that that's what you uh, what you guys did. Uh, was that taxing to anybody, or tiring, or exhausting? Uh, but like, but what was the uh, what was the toll of of doing two shows a day? I mean, half hour shows a day, but two shows a day nonetheless. I, I want to say first, like it didn't feel like work at all. Like we were playing games probably like 70% of the time because <laughs> you're just waiting for like the next shot, right guys? Like we were all, we were, I mean, I have pictures of us just playing games. Like, so like, I don't, it was, it was a very kid friendly set. Like it could definitely kid friendly set. And I want to answer Carol's question really quick. Like I showed, I showed kid songs to, um, I showed kid songs to my nieces and nephew, um, the baby animal songs DVD. It was a DVD and I would show it to my nieces and nephew um, growing up and then my nieces both got into acting uh, professionally so like they you know, they're, like aware like oh yeah Chris were Uncle Chris worked as a as a kid actor too and so we have that sort of bond together now which I think is really cool and um, and I also want to say that um, Carol I remember very distinctly my first meeting with Carol when we were already we booked the show and she sat down with each of us individually to figure out what role we would play. I don't know if, does anybody else remember their sit down with Carol? Because mine was so specific in my life because um, she asked me questions that she really wanted to get to know me and like what I really wanted to do. And it's funny that she cast me as the writer because now I'm a playwright. So it's like, it's cool how that all worked out. You know, she saw, she saw it in me before I knew it. So mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> What was the game that we all played and became like masters at with the with the rocks, the stones? Mancala. Oh, Mancala. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> that was, and we were like master Mancala players. <laughs> Alex and Christian were, pro I mean, they definitely had the most workload and definitely had the longest monologues and the most memorization. So I think like that question probably applies to them, you know, and they definitely took the brunt of the workload as the hosts and definitely, you know, were, 
up there and on screen the most. So I think that question, you know, I think Alex, you know, Alex, I'd like to hear from you in terms of your thoughts and, you know, you were out there the most and on camera the most. It really didn't feel like work to me either. I think it was such an amazing experience to get to work with. I mean, this caliber of producers, directors, music producers, choreographers, everyone. I mean, as a child, you couldn't ask for better influences in your life and better experiences and challenges to make you disciplined and um, work hard. So I think it was a great experience. I have no negative feedback. I mean, the ability to have the opportunity to travel to New York like Christian and I did and be in the Macy's parade at Howell's. <laughs> you know, I think we traveled oh, geez, to Texas, yeah. Texas, Texas and yeah. children and hospitals. I mean, did, the experiences yeah. that we shared along the way and the friendships that we made. I know even Katie, like as an adult, my husband flew to New York to rescue a dog <laughs> that one of her um, <laughs> seamstresses or whatever had to get rid of. So, I mean, I think it's a bond that you can never replace. And I'm very thankful for that. So thank you to all of you. Yeah. So, uh, so um, actually, Alex, that's kind of a good segue into the, uh, the next clip that I wanted to uh, share because I mean, this is uh, one of the promos that I saw on uh, PBS uh, growing up because uh, it was, I think it's probably because you guys, you and Christian were the co-hosts you know, you were the ones tasked with uh, uh, having to, uh, you know, cut the promos for the, uh, for the program. So, and I remember seeing maybe one, uh, one of these, but uh, this is a, uh, yeah, this this is pretty much what it was. If I can, uh, again, I'm I'm just going off of the uh, shared screen right here. Well, I, I mean, of course, by then you had to have, uh, uh, how do you say? Uh, well, I'll get back to that in just a second. But um, wait, wait, did you ever feel like um, you said it didn't feel like work? But did you ever feel like a sense of pride that you two were more or less the the human faces of the show? Go ahead. No, I, I, I felt that there was a responsibility, but like it was, it didn't feel like work to us. And, and the, I mean, even getting hired to be the host, it was really a surprise for me. Um, <laughs> what's like, I was like, oh, I'm, I wanted the host. And, but I, I took it with, with, I did take it with pride in, in, that I had to, there's, there was a responsibility to it. And I felt like I, I, you know, I try to learn my lines and do the best I can with it. And hopefully I did an okay job throughout, throughout those episodes. So, um, but yeah, no. Yeah. Did, no, all right, here's the, uh, Carol, did, did we actually have, have an auto view or, or a prompter? Yeah. 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 Yeah, so Alex, Chris, Christian and Alex, you know, had the most dialogue, but they were on prompter. Right. And the kids who were doing the scenes in the offices and everywhere else, for the most part, had to learn their lines. So, right. yeah, the behind the scenes stuff, they learned their lines. Um, but we yeah. did have prompters on some of the cameras, too, when we shot in the office and, and the other stuff. But like uh, Hassan and Melanie, you had to learn your lines, right? Yeah. Did you have prompter at all? I don't think so. No. Funny story. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if Alex remembers this, but uh, I had I had bad eyesight, and so there was one there was one episode where I didn't know we were doing two episodes at once, and so the night before I usually learn my lines, and then I figured out that oh we're having we're having a second episode. And then I was just kind of like freaked out. I'm like, I don't, I didn't remember reading this script. And so uh, I was trying, there was one monologue for me where it was just a laundry list of stuff. And I don't remember if, if you remember that, Alexandra, <laughs> but it was, uh, I was trying to, I was trying to do these lines and I wasn't getting it. And I think Bruce, <laughs> <laughs> you it was over the last few years that just read the lines <laughs> but 
And then I think Alex asked, like, oh, what's wrong? And I said, I can't, I can't see, I can't, I wasn't reading the prompter because I can't see it. And my, I had bad eyesight. And so um, we had to put the, the, the letters like really, really big <laughs> in order for me to, do, to get through, through this one scene. And then it was, it was literally like one word per line. thing, uh-huh. per line. <laughs> and so I was so embarrassed. I don't know, because like people can watch in the green room and I don't know if they knew what was happening. It's like, this is taking way too long, but uh, that happened. And, but I remember Alexandra was very, very sweet and said like, it's okay, you're good, you're good. And we got through it and we got through the episode. So I don't know if well, that- patient with my Illinois accent. Because I always <laughs> no. as well. <laughs> no. I didn't even notice that. I loved it. Yeah, I, would, I would remember that. There would always be a few words that you would say a little unconventional. Oh, yeah. Sometimes we would do three or four or five takes and that was just the way you were going to deliver it. You know, but yeah. I don't remember right. that. But I forgot about that until you said that. Right. <laughs> Alex, I just want to say real quickly, because because I was in college radio, and um, I guess one time my aunt, who lives in Indianapolis, she was listening one time, and she's like, yo, she's, he's got a Chicago accent. I'm like, I know you're from the St. Louis area, but um, it's, uh, but you know, I guess we're all Illinois people, one and the, the same, our, uh, our uh, very heavily uh, populated, broke state. But uh in, in any of that's, that's, that's as political as we're gonna get on here. But um, in any event, uh, I finally did find the uh, uh, the thing I wanted to uh, share the uh, the promo that uh, that you guys cut. So here's that. So, so yeah, that was how I first heard about uh, kid songs. So, um, I, 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 here's probably one of the things I'm most uh, curious about. Uh, that were there any outtakes that didn't make it on the air for like a very, very specific reason? <laughs> God. Well, there, there's a lot of outtakes. You know, I mean, there's blown lines, there's blown action. You know, mm-hmm. but um, I, I don't remember. You know things that were, uh, you know, it's been a long time, but I just don't remember, you know, things go, you know, like something going disastrously wrong over and over again or something during the shooting of, you know, of the show. But certainly, you know, the, the kids were incredibly good, but you don't always get it on the first take. Mm-hmm. I remember, I remember there was a high five, Hassan. Do you remember this? Uh, we had, the, we, we, it, was, it was the episode where like you were about to like play baseball um, for uh, for a different school or something like that, you're getting transferred to a different school or something, and we had to like high five in the camera shot, and we like missed a couple of times, so we had to like do it. <laughs> That's what I remember. How about you, Hassan. I, I was gonna say, um, and Kara, I'm curious if you remember this, uh, but there was one day where I just had like a really 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 bad case of the giggles. Oh. I think it was just like a, it was like just a long day for us. And there's this one line and I just couldn't get it. And I remember I would look at like Kevin and I would just laugh. I would look like at Chris behind me and just want to laugh. Like it was just, I just could not stop laughing. And at one point you had to like take me off set and put me to the side and be like, you need to get this done. You need to get this done (laughs) so we can go home. It was just like, usually I was like, I, you know, I was, I took everything serious, but like that day it was just like, everything was funny like anybody's expression on their face like everything was just absolutely hilarious and like i just couldn't i just couldn't contain it <laughs> talk about baseball too many times yeah, I, I don't remember that i remember you always being a super good natured kid really easy going you know really easy to work with but i don't i don't remember i vaguely now that you're saying it i'm it's i'm vaguely remembering it but yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's move on to uh, some of the couple of the aspects of the show, namely the uh, the guest stars. 
Um, you had a guest on every episode. Um, uh, probably the most prominent people you talked to, a uh, prominent person on the show was uh, Raven Simone. And uh, Alexandra, you said in uh, that episode, she ran around the room and gave everybody a hug uh, in this uh, Chicago Tribune article that uh, you were interviewed for. Um, so uh, what do you guys remember about uh, that particular episode? Because she was probably the, uh, the biggest uh, uh, guest that you had on the show during that season. Well, actually, because um, I didn't watch the Cosby show, so I didn't really know her yet. It wasn't for me. I don't know if you guys remember, but Ariana Richards from Jurassic Park came on our show. That was huge. When she came on our show, I remember that was huge because like that, those, that movie was so big, right? I mean, that, that was for me. That was, I don't know for anybody else, like what guests stuck out for you. Yeah. Um, I remember I say- Nadia Komeni. <laughs> Yes, I was actually going to uh, to mention that. And uh, but by the way, Alex, in that episode, you just kind of have your hands up there on the desk like that, like you're like so enamored and enthralled of what she and uh, Bart Conn are, are doing. And you know, they were together at a the time; they've since been married. So, and uh, I actually uh, did get to meet uh, Nadia and Bart uh, several years ago at the uh, Jerry Lewis MDA telethon because um, because they all came back to uh, Chicago to uh, to take part in the Chicago-based uh, telecast uh, for that. And you know, Bart's from the area. Um, so that was probably part of the reason why. And um, I, you know, I was working the phones uh, for that telethon, and um, I actually got a picture with them uh, afterwards. So, um, so you know, I thought that was really exciting to uh, see a couple of uh, you know world class Olympic gymnasts who just so happen to be married together at the at the same time. So um, I'm very you know, yeah, that was a really uh, exciting part for me. But uh, did, was there anyone else who came to the studio that like really just wow do you guys because i mean some people were more prominent than others so i'm sure uh some people are like really really starstruck like jimmy vassar dave cos uh you know the list goes on sheila e was there also yeah um yeah and then- we had a guy from the harlem globetrotters i remember that that was cool I'm for, I'm, I totally forgot of all these until you guys are saying all the names. So. Mm-hmm. Jules Sylvester, too, with the alligator. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk more uh, about that uh, later on. But, um, but you know, Yvonne, I, I, I haven't uh, talked to you in a, in a little bit. I just wanted to ask you uh, really quickly, um, what was it like uh, doing makeup for the kids in the studio as opposed to on location, like with the, the videos? Uh, Yvonne is on mute right now. Sorry, we're on Zoom. Yes. Um, I wasn't in a trailer uh, and managing three other people that were also helping me. I was in a room and that made a big difference because it was a a simpler time. But, you know, I just, as I was, (laughs) I love that. I just love seeing that. Oh my God. I just remember how amazing the kids were all the time. And my, my thoughts were when I'm sitting here looking at everybody, uh, how amazing they were. And they let me do all this weird stuff all the time. So I all, often thought, I wonder how they feel about this. You know, I would do these weird hairdos and they had feathers and we had saloon girls and they just let me do whatever was necessary. Now I know they were pros, but they were also kids. And so my feeling about it is sitting here looking at everybody, how did it feel to you when you came into that makeup room with these adults and we were doing all this stuff? And I mean, you seemed like you were having a really fun time. I was having a fun time most of the time. I mean, there were challenging days when people, because everybody, whatever age they are, have little moments of meltdowns. But basically the whole time I often thought, these kids basically are really good kids. They're talented. They let us do all this stuff and they keep bringing it all the time. So my question is to, you know, it was fun for me. This all was like insane. And it was also fun every day because I got to be as creative as I could come up with within reason and, and, actually do those things and the kids were all ready to do it so my question to all the you guys now as adults 
was that fun for you to come in there and get the costumes on and get dressed up? I mean, because I would think it would be great. So what was your ideas about coming into that makeup and hair room? Well, I thought it was amazing. And I learned so much from you that I'm still practicing like the same techniques that you use. And I wish I could do your little tie up hairstyles and all the stuff that you, you <laughs> did to us. So it was amazing. You were, we always loved you. And I think, I mean, for me, obviously, you know, you and Pat were so inspirational and the amount of times it got kicked out of your room because <laughs> there was no <laughs> space and it was like, okay, Katie, you got to go now. You, there's no space in here. I'm busy, you know, but you know, you and Pat were, you know, I look back now and how full circle the entire thing is I you know grew up in your makeup room Pat's wardrobe room then played the wardrobe girl and have made a career of being a fashion designer and you know it's whether it was you know Carol's vision or it was subconscious or it was meant to be whatever it is um you know it's pretty full circle and you guys definitely made an impact and, you know, I, you know, I love you to death. And I, you know, I remember back then, like I said, you know, I just wanted to sit there and watch you and the creative process and watching her. And I, I constantly think back, you know, now, and even though it was just kids songs, TV show, t-shirts or whatever you guys were doing, there was so much that went into it. And I appreciate it now being a designer and, you know, learning and seeing, you know, dressing God knows how many children, you know, what an undertaking that was. It's not as easy as it looked. Well, it was different, it was different for you because all the other kids had parents on the set. And yeah. I was working. So he you had would, us. Yeah. So you would go off with, with Yvonne and Pat unless you were in school but everyone else had their parents to hang out with. And, you know, so it was very different. Yeah. Also, what your parents did, they, how was their experience going through this with you? Because they had to be with you all the time. How did, how did that all work out family-wise for you guys? Well, my mom's in the other room. <laughs> I could ask her herself. Let me just ask her if she's willing to make an appearance. Hold on, because I can answer. Your <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, while you're getting her, um, uh, so Yvonne and Katie, you're pretty much each other's counterparts because you, know, you know, Katie, you were the hair and makeup person on the show. Yvonne, you were the actual hair designer. So, um, Yvonne, did you uh, give Katie tips as to how to portray that role? And Katie, did you learn anything from from uh, her as far as? Uh, bringing that to the show. I mean, she would give me my little set and she would say, you know, fluff here, do this. But it was, you know, I literally sat in her room until she kicked me out. I mean, I'm, that's not an exaggeration. <laughs> I would sit in her chair until someone else came in and she would say, okay, you gotta, you gotta go now. Like, I don't have space for you. I can't curl your hair anymore. You have to go. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, these are such fond memories and to see everybody as these wonderful adults now is just like so unique. And you know, you talked about the Jurassic Park person that came and I think of Sheila E. And you know, after when I was no longer doing kids songs and my career went on, I worked with Raven Simone on Hanging with Mr. Cooper. I worked with Jurassic Park people. It was like, it was like a, this whole setup for my career also. So Katie was talking about how influential I was. I learned so much from Carol. I learned so much from Bruce. Um, I can't say enough what this experience was for me on a daily basis, whether it was crazy or not, the experience uh, groomed me and helped me to go on to do these other huge movies, how to work with kids. Uh, I mean, I love kids anyway. 
I only have one, but I had many on the set. So I think that doing a kid's show was like a divine plan for me to end up with meeting Carol and then later meeting Bruce and doing this show with all of you because um, it just, everything else was really easy after that, even though there were other hard parts because kids and animals, like I said earlier, and all the stressors, and we just, thank you for saying it looked easy. It wasn't always easy, but you know, that's what happens when the environment and the setup is so that we can all just do our jobs and be available to each other. So, can I interject for just a second? I, yeah. I just want to ask Christian one question. <laughs> Christian, did working in a fake TV studio or a real TV studio studio have anything to do with you going into audio? Absolutely. It really is the catalyst of, of that. And I think it's, especially being in the, the television show, I got to see the, the different aspects of it. And it, it really kind of played a part in just knowing how everything works and going to, to film school um, and working with all these filmmakers that were trying to get into it. It was already knew what the template was. Like, I've seen it. I've, I've been through it. I know like gaffing and, and everything like cinematography, all that stuff, it, it just, it played into the part of what my career is. So it, it definitely was a, a, a huge part of what I do today. So thank you for that. May I interject yes, for just a second, Jeffrey? Yes. Um, so I'm dying. I'm like dying to know what everyone's up to nowadays. And I know you have your schedule. <laughs> possible for us to like do the where are they now like section now is that possible i know it's not according to your schedule but i just <laughs> and i know and i know that we have our schedules today all right do we have a second no i'm kidding um all right all right well, why don't you go first then since uh since you're uh since you uh, came up with that yeah, just because like I heard, you know, Katie's like fashion designer, like a little some of that. And then like Christian's talking about audio and and then Yvonne has worked on movies and all this stuff. I was just, I was just dying to know. And I, I want to make sure everyone gets a chance to to share while we have the time. So sure. um, thank you, Jeffrey, for doing that. I um, but yeah, so me, um, I, uh, I I'm, I'm really involved in mental health. Um, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder at 16 years old. And, um, and I was hospitalized twice for it. And so I decided to speak out about it rather than be quiet about it and just like try to break the stigma of mental illness in, especially in the Asian American community. So I wrote a play to, um, to do that, uh, to break the stigma. So we, we go out into the communities and we present the play and then we have a discussion afterward about mental health. So that's what I want to share in our reunion today. And I'm so looking forward to hearing what everyone else is doing nowadays. And I just, I love you all so much. And being on Kid Songs was like one of the most, like just greatest experiences in my life. So, yeah. Uh, Hassan, I'll, popcorn. Don't you go? I'll popcorn it to Mark. Oh, okay. We'll do that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Mel. <laughs> Um, so I uh, am a lawyer now. Um, I th told some people that earlier. Uh, I work a lot with video games, intellectual property, copyrights, trademarks. Um, and I also went to film school, actually. I'm a screenwriting major. I uh, came in third place in the Goldwyn Awards in 2007. So that was pretty cool. Um, and, you know, being on a set in various things, I mean, I, I went on to go do some other theatrical work after kids songs. I was on like Seventh Heaven, I was in Star Trek. I did some voiceover work and came to Hill. Uh, and so being on a set like that and being like, I mean, you know, we weren't really making the show. We kind of felt like we were at times. That experience kind of pushed me toward uh, more the creative side. And so that was one of the reasons why I went to film school actually and why I still write in my spare time uh, for fun not uh, just for work, but yeah, so I'm still in LA. Uh, and I actually, Chris mentioned the building where we auditioned. I realized I worked about a block away from there uh, until about a few years ago. So that's pretty funny to realize that that was right there as well. So that's where I'm at. All right, who wants to go next? 
who wants to say what they're doing next? Katie, you want to? Sure. Um, so yeah, I've been in fashion now for about, uh, I don't even know, I lost track, 14-ish years. Wow. Um, I've been in basically non-traditional bridal and uh, Carol and I had a company together called Houghton, which basically was the first non-traditional bridal brand. Um, and that launched in 2011. We closed it in 2018. Um, since then, I created a consulting company where I consult fashion brands, uh, fashion designers, people, founders who want to get into the fashion com uh, space uh, in a creative director role or helping them build their businesses uh, from a creative standpoint. Um, and then I launched my own new bridal company or brand in December, 2020. Uh, so only about three months ago uh, under my own name. So Catherine Polk Bridal, which is a, uh, it's called Catherine Polk Bridal for Everybody. And it's size inclusive, double zero to 30. And um, it with no upcharging and offers the same collection for everyone. Um, and so working on growing that brand while still consulting for other designers, other people, other brands in all kinds of different fashion spaces, tech and, and, and whatnot. So that's what I've been doing. All right, who's next? Uh, Mel, we haven't heard from you in a while. You wanna go? Yeah, I'll go. Well, first, I want to say what a pleasure it is to see all of you. I have a great story when I was in college. I never realized the impact that kids songs had on other kids lives. Um, but over the years, I feel like every so years, whether it's Instagram or when I was in college, I've always had people message me. I remember I was in college in the cafeteria, and a kid came up to me and he was like, really shy. He was like, I just want to say that I saw you on kids songs. And you guys your whole the whole cast just you know impacted my life and just made me who I am today and that really hit me because when I was 12 when we did kids songs and yeah I thought okay people watch this but I never really realized what an impact it had on kids lives so that's amazing I've met so many people through Instagram now who have messaged me like oh my god like I love kids songs it was so great um but yeah after kids songs I I think that was the end of my acting career, I don't know if you remember Carol, but uh, one of the things I wanted to mention earlier was how like great it was that Carol really wrote our characters on who we were. I mean, I remember talking about my ice skating on Kids Songs because I was an ice skater at the time. I remember talking about my ethnicity and, you know, the four corners of the world of where I came from. And, you know, it was just such a great show. And I think, yeah, that was the end of my acting career. So I just have such fond memories. And now I just, I'm still in Los Angeles. I work in digital marketing. Um, I have a fashion lifestyle blog that I started when I was in grad school because I was bored and <laughs> that was just the thing to do at the time. And I just got married last year. Next Saturday is my one year uh, anniversary. We were supposed to have our wedding in Italy, April 18th, but then COVID happened. So that's still postponed. And yeah, I have two rescue dogs. Just happily living here in LA <laughs> and I was so happy to reconnect with Chris um I think we reconnected on Instagram he reached out to me in December um but I have to say I've probably been friends with Christian the longest on Instagram we reconnected Christian and his sister on Instagram maybe like five six years ago so it's so great to see everybody else yeah, for the record Melanie said on the show that she was Thai Russian Chinese and Czechoslovakian so that really is a lot of corners of the world uh, uh that Alex what about you where are you up to these days? Sorry, I had to unmute. <laughs> um, well, after Kids Songs, I continued to do acting and stay in the entertainment industry through college. And then in 2006, I graduated with my bachelor's in accounting. And I got married the same year. Um, I went into public accounting. And then after a few years, gradually got dragged back into the entertainment industry. And I started working with... Um, writers, producers, production companies, and whatnot, and I became a business manager, and I launched my own business management firm in 2014, and it's still going strong, and so I do accounting, tax, 
uh, financial advice, like pretty much day-to-day business management now. And I had a little boy mm-hmm. in um, 2018, Cristiano. So he's the light of my life now. Yeah, oh, Christian, you're like, ooh, very similar to my name. Yeah, similar <laughs> with an Italian twist. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah, Christian, you, uh, you, you talked about to your, uh, your audio careers or anything else that you've been up to? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, um, just, that's just been that, that's been my, that's been my passion since, since after kid songs and wanted to do, uh, music production, uh, ever since and went to college, uh, for that, for that exact reason. And then I just, hooked up with a lot of, of people that were filmmakers and they needed to do um, to, to build their, their films with sound. And I kind of got mixed up in that, that realm of it. And uh, it just kind of, that's what I'm doing now. I'm a, uh, I'm a supervising sound editor for Technicolor at the moment and um, worked on shows like Daredevil, Glee, uh, American Horror Story, um, I'm currently working on 911 that's on Fox and, uh, yeah, it's just doing, um, post sound and it's, it really is to, to kind of echo what I already said. It's, it's, it, I was very interested in the whole background of, of, of the entertainment and making a television show or a film and, uh, yeah, in, in, and Kid Songs was really a, a big influence on, on what I wanted to do um, as a career. So, yeah, thank you. Right. And Hassan, we will wrap up with you in, in this part of the program. What were you up to? I know sure. we know you did talk before, but uh, for everybody else. It's probably changed since then. Uh, <laughs> it's been like but, uh, three and a half years, so. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I would like to just echo as well, just, um, you know, Kid Songs for me, you know, that was arguably like one of the biggest acting gigs I had, you know, um, at that time. It was just, it made up such a significant um, experience, you know, in my childhood and just such fond memories. And I feel so appreciative that um, I was able to be a part of that, you know, and uh, be on the show and then uh, the following, the music videos. So it was just like an amazing experience that I look back uh, so fondly. So I uh, just want to say that, like really appreciative of that and just happy to see everyone here. Um, so since then, you know, I continued to, uh, I, st- I stuck with acting up until like end of high school. Um, that's kind of when I wanted to fall out of it just because I thought I was taking away from my high school experience. Uh, so that's kind of when I, um, decided, you know, I want to go have the college experience. So I went to uh, Loyola Marymount, studied economics, uh, economics and Spanish, double major, um, got really into uh, like community, nonprofit, NGO type work. Um, So that's kind of where I landed at first. Um, uh, During that time, I also became a uh, owner of a coffee shop, which which was a lot of fun and a lot of work. Um, and then after that, I segued that just into uh, consulting. Um, I had launched like a boutique digital marketing agency. And then uh, from there, just just consulting, doing a lot of uh, supporting local businesses that have a uh, community focus. Um, and then in between that, I've been, you know, managed to still be creative and do other things. Hassan, you went to LMU? I did, bro. Were you there? I went to LMU. I feel like I knew Why that. Why didn't I see <laughs> Really? Oh my I gosh. I, knew that. I don't know. <laughs> that makes me so sad. That makes me so sad that I, we didn't cross paths. Oh, Are you actually, a fun... student organizations or? Uh, I, I, was, I was kind of in the film school realm of everything. So we just kind of okay. kept in our own little bubble, yes. you know. Uh, but I, I do, know. I do knew some, um, you know, to other clicks, but it's funny because I mean, there's <laughs> there's a kid songs that Alex knows uh, our mutual friend uh, Kyle. He was in some of the the videos, but he went yeah. to LMU too, and oh. he was we crossed paths and and didn't know because he looks to- he would look totally different, and then he's like, oh, I'm Kyle, I'm Christian, and then he's like, Christian Buenaventura, <laughs> and 
and we're like wait a second and i wish that that happened with with us what what year were you i'm sorry that i'm totally um, oh, no, no. going on the tangent no i entered in 2004 what's Yeah, but you know, I, I yeah, okay. We were too, we were in we were probably walked past each other, so but I, I had a huge but, afro, uh, like it was down to like my shoulders. <laughs> you know, I was I was doing all kinds of stuff, so I don't know. I don't but even know if you would have recognized that, me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah. That's that's very nice. All right, but before we get to the uh, audio visual portion of this, because I have a lot I wanted to share and 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 um but yeah, um, I guess uh, the, the one more uh, discussion topic we should have before we move on to that, um, that we should address uh, uh, where the bagels come from and what was your guys' opinion of that? Carol, you, you probably had a hand in the creation of the bagels, am I right? Yeah. Um, why did we come up with the bagels? I don't know why we, we came up with the bagels uh, because it was PBS and everything was character driven and it seemed that characters would give us the opportunity to, even though they were mostly silly and goofy, they also spoke a lot of truth in there every now and then if you, if you kind of listen to them and it just gave an opportunity to uh, introduce characters, which was something that you know, while I said earlier that we, Bruce and I had such creative freedom with everything, we were from our toy company partners and PBS, you know, they wanted characters. So the question was, how could we create characters in this live action setting that with real kids, real studio, everything's real. How do you put fictional characters into that? So it was a bit of a challenge to try to figure out how could we put characters into a very real situation and have it be believable. So we kind of struggled with it for a bit and decided to give it a go. Went through a lot of design incarnations and um, created them. And after we created Billy, it seemed like everybody liked Billy. Um, and then, you know, I really wanted to have, you know, a female character as well. So we introduced Ruby in the, the next year. Um, you know, Kid Songs was always in inclusive and, you know, Kid Songs is, is, was this fantasy world. If you look back to what the world was like in the early 80s and 90s, where it was, um, you know, you, you had a female boss, a female black woman boss at the PBS station, right? We just put it out there and everybody just, you know, accepted it. We had female producers, we had e equal male, female co-hosts and, you know, and, and race didn't matter, even age didn't matter. The kids were just kind of these self-empowered kids who did stuff and just kind of did the same thing with the bagels, just kind of took a little bit of fantasy and just put them in there and saw, you know, if it would fly or not. And people seem to accept it. We never got any question of like, why do you have these weird characters zipping in and out of the studio? So once they were there, we kind of liked them. So we stuck with them. Yeah, yeah. Chris is like, Kid Songs was so diverse. Props to you, Carol. Uh, but uh, any, any of you cast members, did you feel strong about the Bigos? Did you love them? Did you hate them? Did, were you just like, eh, like, like anyone have any strong feelings about them at all or not so strong feelings i just remember the voice of billy was a female i think like wasn't she the voice of bart simpson or something crazy uh julene renee was her name she was on another show that bruce did she was a singer uh dancer very good dancer singer uh from uh the show roundhouse that bruce did for nickelodeon so she right. did, she did the voice, and then identical twins, Frit and Frat, played the character in the suit because being in the suit was exhausting. Yeah, that was actually the first time. I mean, I was like eight or nine years old. That was the first time I ever saw green screen. I didn't know like what that was or anything, and I was like, "Wait, what's going on here?" And then <laughs> I learned the whole process, and that kind of blew my mind a little bit. But it was really cool to see behind the scenes how that was done. Yeah, because most of the time you kids didn't interact with the Biggles. You acted to their voice and looked at a cutout. Mm -hmm. you know, those little cutouts in different I remember sizes. that. You would hear the voice, yeah, the cutout. Kind of yeah. hit my eye mark. Yeah. yeah. I remember you, Carol, be like, okay, look up. No, look up more. <laughs> hit your mark. That's where Billy is. Yeah. yeah. Bruce, he would Bruce. be there when they were filming sometimes, too. 
Yeah, and then, yeah, and then they would film on other days and maybe you cross path with them because you were rehearsing, you know, or something or having a fitting or something and we were shooting with the Biggles on a, on a non-kids day. So yeah, so they kind of appeared after, you know, on the air after you guys were done. Yeah, Bruce would always go, here, look here. Like he would use his fingers like this and that's where you have to look, like when you're looking at the Biggle. And I remember watching some episodes and going like, wow, I was really off. Like I was not looking at Billy Biggle at all. <laughs> I just recently uh, found a cache of photos. Uh, remember Polaroids? Anyway, I have all the Polaroids uh, of the hairdos that, that were giant. Uh, I have them on giant uh, C stands, the hairdos that I created for the Biggles. And uh, I remember we got them and they had the, the fur, they were all the fur things and everything. And then it was like, they need something else. So I created all, I talked to the people that made the Biggles suits and they gave me extra fur and gave me contrasting fur. And I got to make all these hairdos and I had them all sitting around on these C stands. It there, I just found them like uh, two weeks ago, I should show you, uh, they're hilarious for the Biggles, for the Ruby and for the, um, any other characters that came along, but Ruby had a lot of hair changes. So like I have side, wigs. You like the side pony a lot on her. Yes. Yeah. Well, you gotta do it with the ears, so. <laughs> yeah, so is it more of a challenge to shoot scenes with the uh, Biggles since you, you're looking at something that, that wasn't really there while you were shooting it? Uh, what do you mean, what? Uh, it's more for the cast. Uh, was it more oh, of a yeah. challenge to, to, shoot, uh, to shoot scenes with the Biggles as opposed to just each other? You guys seem to just take it in your stride and just go with it. We're like, okay, you're now talking to this cutout and, you're, and Bruce would say your eyelids here or I'd say what it is. And you're like, oh, okay. You know, it was like falling yeah, off. I, yeah. I totally remember the voice being piped in too. Like that was really a trip at first. And then I, we, we all got used to it. It was just, that was just how the show was. And yeah, it was, it was really interesting. All right, on that, let's get to the, yeah, let's get to the uh, audiovisual portion of this, and we're going to start with some photos. If uh, uh, Once again, uh, Chris and Carol were the ones who uh, provided these for us, so, uh, you know, props to them. Um, yeah, because, um, you know, I, I didn't see any of these until yesterday, so I was just kind of blown away by the fact that, uh, uh, that you know, these pictures are, are probably being seen publicly for the first time, and, and they probably haven't been seen by anybody really ever since uh, these came out so uh, let's start with carol's photos and these are really just screenshots of the uh, episodes so uh let's let's start with this one right here and we got uh we got chris and melanie right here just uh talking and and i think it's kind of appropriate since you guys end up uh end up bringing us all back together so again thank you all all for that um, let's see what we got here. So there's we got Katie there and Megan at one of the aforementioned Biggle scenes, and I'm assuming that the cardboard cover is right there, uh, Katie. And, and Katie, you know, sometimes I noticed that you were the uh, the writer or one of the writers, as opposed to just the uh, hair and makeup. So it seems like you're really a jack of all trades on this on this show. So, so um, there's uh, 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 Janessa and uh, Janet. Uh, you know they're not here, but uh, very prominent on the uh, show. I mean, I guess I'm filling in for Janet as the question time person today. Um, let's see. There's a very very nice shot of the uh, control booth uh, right there. Um, this guy's uh, celebrating. Hassan, did you? Uh, what was it like working with both Kevin and Megan? Since uh, you guys were pretty much in the same place all the time. It was dope. It was dope. We had our own little area right there. Um, you know, that's glass right there, but we, we kind of were kind of sectioned off, you know, and um, you can't tell from this angle, but there was like a bunch of mini, you know, kind of TV screens, uh, which worked also. So um, and some of those, I was the majority of those buttons didn't do anything, but um, it, it was it was fun, you know, being back there. I mean, I would say like my favorite memories were really just kind of those behind the scene moments, you know, in between takes, because uh, that's when you really bond. I mean, you imagine we're on set, we're seeing each other like every other day. Um, the, the connections that you make with these people is just like really incredible. Uh, so we, we had a lot of fun back there. 
Yeah, but yeah, and uh, actually, Hassan, just going off what you said earlier, because because Chris filled in for you on one episode, and he was telling me about it. He's like, I, no, but, but like you know, these those buns don't do anything. There was one scene where he's like messing around with the buns, and he's he was like mad at himself for uh for not uh, making it look authentic enough. So I thought that was kind of amusing. But um, moving on, okay, that there's the uh, aforementioned Ariana Richards uh, spot where she was uh, interviewed. You guys seemed like. That you had a lot of fun with her. There's, there's another picture coming up soon. I'll show that in a bit. Um, Christian, Alex, really nice hats right there. And I, I believe this was your uh, your international show where you were uh, sporting hats from different countries. I know sometimes you guys would be like like dressed up according to the theme of the day. So so is that more fun compared to you know dressing like a kid? I always liked that our shirts were monogrammed. Like every outfit was like monogrammed. And we got these awesome season leather coats that I still have in the closet and they were monogrammed as well. So <laughs> Yeah, my my um, my mom has a jean jacket, and yeah, we, it's still it's still there, and uh, I'm probably gonna rock it right now. So. My mom, but my, my mom's got one too. I was just helping her clean her house up <laughs> recently, and I found all this stuff. <laughs> All right, so, so moving on here. All right, so this is the last one on this row. Now, now you know, Janet's right here with Billy. This was the only time during this season where, where anybody in the cast was shrunk down to Billy's size and, and like, like actually, direct, actually interacting directly with uh, Billy. Uh, Bruce, do you remember anything about shooting this uh, particular scene right there? Or, or Carol, do you remember uh, how, uh, how, you would, how you would have shot something like this? Because obviously it's probably a little more complex than uh, what you would normally shoot in an episode for kids' songs. Anyone there? We can hear you, Carol. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I mean, that, that was tough. I mean, when it came time to putting the Biggles into all of these scenes like this, this was, this was tricky stuff. So yeah, she was making the pastry for real. Um, mm -hmm. And we would usually, we would do the, always do the kids first and then Bruce would put in the Biggles on, you know, on the green screen day. But some of the stuff where there was a lot of interaction and one in front of the other, you can see she's in front of Billy. That was really tricky stuff. And uh, we were using, you know, equipment and stuff that back then that was quite primitive compared to what you do now. So it really came down to Bruce's ingenuity to figure out all of this interaction between the characters and the kids. It, it, it was uh, tough stuff. Well, I mean, for 1994, this is obviously really mind-blowing stuff. I, I mean, some of it may not uh, have aged very well, but, but otherwise, I, I'd, I'd say it still holds up pretty well. So, so Carol, that's what uh, that's what you uh, gave me. So, but now I'm going to go into to Chris's uh, archives right here because he. Uh, oh, look at that! You guys see what Chris has right now? Yeah. All right, who else has one? Bruce has <laughs> one. Bruce, raise your hand. It's in the closet. Not with me, but yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. The, that's the embroidered denim jacket. And then some of the kids were mentioning we also did them as baseball jackets and like turquoise and white. And we did a leather version every year. At the end of the season, we'd give you kids a present of your, your kids' songs TV show jacket. Mm -hmm. And I also remember I got my very first Tiffany's present from you guys. It was a Tiffany locket. I still have it. <laughs> wow, we were so generous. Yeah, well, you can say that again. Um, all right, so going back to the, uh, the photos right here, this is, uh, like I said, this is from uh, Chris's uh, personal archive. So I don't know how many of you have seen these pictures before. I mean, you've seen, maybe you've seen some of them, uh, but uh, here they are. And it starts with the aforementioned game room. If you can see that right there. So, and uh, Chris was uh, telling me beforehand that, you know, you guys played a, a lot of board games. So, um, so you guys really were not bored. I know you guys mentioned that earlier, but was it like, uh, like, like how much time did it seem like passed before? Wait, let me start again. How much time did it seem like uh, did it take to play these games before you, you like somebody got called on to do a scene? Would you ever finish a game before you had to go do a scene or what? Or maybe Oh, yeah, I think we did. 
We did. We I we were always playing games. Uh, I remember always playing Speed, the the card game Speed. I don't know if everyone remembered that. Oh, I, but, I remember, uh, that's, how I learned, that's how I learned how to play it it's with you guys. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I we 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 were always playing games, and uh, up until we were called to 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 go film, so it was always fun. And if we were released early, we would go to Six Flags sometimes. Do you guys remember that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 was, it, was Six Flags near the studio or what? Maybe 45 minutes away or so, but we would get to go ride the roller coasters over and over and over. Our moms would give in and take us after set. <laughs> What? What? I maybe that's the older cast members because I don't remember. That sucks. Yeah, oh, I, I was the oldest. I was. I didn't go. I don't remember. No, I didn't do anything. Well, <laughs> what? I think I went one time. Yeah, I remember going. <laughs> Jeez. We went. All right, moving on. We. I think we went. Yeah. All right, moving on to what else we got here. All right, there's the the book, Chris. You, you shared that photo earlier, so um. You know, we've seen that one very nice uh, uh, picture, Yvonne. Um, and, and here you can really <laughs> know, uh, how tiny everybody really was. I May mean, not have seen so on TV, but everything seems bigger on TV. So um, I think this paints a, this is like a better uh, perspective as to uh, how tall everybody really was at that time. Christian, you, uh, it's probably a good thing Megan's not here. She'd probably be mad at you right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I haven't gotten much taller since then, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. And, and here you can really uh, tell you, see the era because you got the payphone in the background. So, um, did anyone ever use the payphone? Here, here's actually two, yeah. two, funny, two funny things about that. One, you can see in this photo that I'm wearing a smock. Um, we had to eat, wear smocks oh, yeah. where we would like eat lunch because we didn't want to get our wardrobe dirty. And I remember just constantly wearing a smock like the entire time. <laughs> So seeing this photo is really funny, and we we did use the payphone. I think we we used to we used to make prank calls. <laughs> oh, you want to share one of them, or is that uh, lost to time? I don't remember exactly. I just remember doing it and having fun doing it. <laughs> uh, for, for the record, Mark Mark was pretty. Uh, you know, he was <laughs> he was he was one of the uh, the uh, pranksters uh, around set. So I wouldn't be surprised if he was. Uh, making prank calls and I was probably behind him like listening as well. Can you talk about the <laughs> shorts? Very, yeah, yeah, very nice uh, shorts right there. I was that, that was from my own collection, uh, unfortunately. Oh, wow. uh, it's, a, it, it's a choice. <laughs> All right. I used, to, I used to wear much cooler clothes, man. <laughs> yeah, again, moving on, you, you can definitely tell it's you know the early '90s uh, fashion, '80s fashion is still very much alive in these in this picture right here. You, you even got the uh, Hassan. You have the the flat top that was popular around that time. Flat flat top and the boots that seem to never escape me in any of these pictures. <laughs> yeah, I think I had similar clothes to uh, to this uh, around that era, maybe even a little further into the '90s. So I, I guess that was just the style. Um, let's see, similar picture right there. Yeah, yeah, Chris being the ladies' man right here with uh, you know most of the female cast right here. So very nice stuff. Uh, all right, so so here's the uh, the lunch that you guys were talking about, and uh, apparently everyone is uh, suing Gooby. Uh, Christian, what is it with you and Megan? You're getting Megan bunny ears because the second photo I've seen this in. <laughs> <laughs> Megan and I we we hung out quite a bit um, during the time. Of our, I mean, all of our parents were were pretty close, but yeah. Uh, Megan, Megan and I, I think we were, we were in the videos quite a bit and, and even after the television show. Um, yeah, so, uh, we, yeah, we were, we were good friends. Yeah. Yeah. So you, uh, yeah, you guys talked about the, the smocks that you, cause you didn't want to get your, your wardrobe clean. And now uh, here's a more, uh, the more, more fuller picture of uh, you guys uh, eating. So did you cater every day or was it made in house? So, you know, what was the deal there? We catered every day. Oh yeah. What were some of the uh, more popular places that, that you might remember that you uh, would get food from? Cause it looks like you, uh, it looks like I got quite a, a diverse uh, amount of food right there. 
Yeah, I I don't remember, but uh, we always did good catering on all of our productions. I just don't remember who you know who it came from. Um, you know, we had to do staggered meals sometimes between the crew and the kids because they would eat. You know, they, the crew would still be working and the kids would be on the break or you know something like that. But so that's probably why it's wrapped up. Looks like it's wrapped up in foil, mm-hmm. but. Um, yeah, I think we mostly had a catering company, not like takeout. Gotcha. See, moving on here, there's a cute picture of uh, Chris and Megan right there for your self-explanatory. Um, all right, so here we are. We have the uh, the heads of the station, uh, Mr. Forbes and Mrs. Wilson, and you know, Mr. Forbes giving the bunny ears. Um, I guess I guess that was uh, kind of worthy of his character. Boy, the bunny ears were everywhere in the '90s. I'm just realizing that now. Uh, but uh, as long as we're on this picture, what do you guys remember about uh, you know Mrs. Wilson, Mr. Forbes, and and their role on on the show? Just that they were super nice. I mean, they were really easy to work with. Um, that that Mr. Forbes would make us laugh a lot. I remember that he'd make us laugh. Um, I tried to get a hold of both of them. Um, I got a hold of. I found Stephanie on on uh, on Facebook, and I sent her a few messages, but didn't get anything back. So, and same with Janessa. So I'm really sad that I didn't get them in. But um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, Jeffrey. I remember. Yeah, but yeah. I guess it's kind of in line with uh, Mr. Forbes always saying groaners during the the show. So I guess that was kind of in character for him. Um, Man, it's a nice cute picture of you guys. Very nice. But does anyone know who this is in the in the background right here? That's, um, that's my mom. Yeah. That's my mom. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like photo bombing before it was a thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's um yeah okay. This is kind of a smaller picture right here, but this is when uh, Ariana Richards came in, and you all had the uh, cast in there. Now. Uh, I recognized everybody in this picture, but I did not recognize these two girls in the white shirts here uh, up front. Does anyone remember who uh, who these two are? That's my sister with the dark Sister. Like- yeah, Antoinette, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then the other girl is Janessa's little sister. Oh, yes. oh. Yeah. Very nice. And Mark is writing a character right there, probably because of the whole Jurassic Park thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> Very excited. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, so we got more of the game right here. Does anyone know what game is being played uh, right here? Does it look uh, familiar at all? No, totally speed, right, Christian? Yeah. That's speed. It's either speed or yeah. I'm pretty sure we're we're playing speed or we're playing you know it one of the two. Fun. I think I don't know. either of the two. There was that was going around quite a bit. Yeah. And Hassan is in his own little world playing with blocks or something. <laughs> Yeah, all those games were like foreign to me. I had to like learn them on set. <laughs> so. You still remember how to play any of them? Are you still a master at them or or what? He doesn't know. Uh, let's see. I let's see. We got more. Okay, here is uh, Chris on the set of the uh, top ten list, and I believe that's Carol and, and Bruce right there together. So, uh, so Chris, you are one of the uh, the few people who actually be on the set of the uh, actual show. I mean, Christian and Alex were there all the time, and you know, Janet was on as well. But uh, but you did have a, a five or six of these top ten lists. So so what do you remember about uh, about shooting these? Um, I remember that there was a teleprompter, thank God, because that was a lot to, to learn. Um, so I'm with Christian and Alex with that. Um, and then I had to work with someone prior. I don't know who um, Carol set me up with, but it was like this, like, like, a, like a coach, like to, um, to help me with my lines. And she, I, I had to be in a different room and she had to go through the whole top 10 list with me. And and I remember the drawings were amazing. Do you remember Carol who drew those? Those drawings were amazing. Yeah, they were. Yeah, actually there was a lady that worked for us um, named Catherine uh, who, did, who helped with casting and music clearance. She was full-time in our office. Her husband was a professional cartoonist. In fact, he worked for the LA Times and he did all the top 10 uh, graphics. He was great. His name is Phil, Phil Myers. Wow. So and yeah, don't ask me where in my memory I just pulled that from. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you, Carol, for for the opportunity to like be able to be like on camera, like on the set, doing stuff like that. That was pretty cool for me. Yeah, yeah. 
We'll, we'll see while those top 10 lists in, in just a little bit, but uh, we've got a few more photos here. Um, um, I can tell Mark is definitely playing perfection, which is a, uh, a can be a very intense game. And uh, Chris, you're playing with Megan at, I don't know, it looks like War. Does that speed. sound right? Well, that's speed. That's oh, definitely yeah. speed. Okay, I need to know how to play this game because it looks like you just write your deck of cards for, for this. So now I want to know how to play this game. If someone can send me the, give me the instructions after we're done here, uh, yeah. I, you know, maybe I can impress my fiance or something. Maybe I can teach her how to play. Um, so uh, whatever. And then we got all the mothers right here. Yeah, all the moms. Yep. Anyone wow. have any stories about uh, the moms being on set all the time? I mean, uh, yeah, you can see my crazy mom right here in the middle. <laughs> I love how she's just like, ah, that's the first thing when I reconnected with Chris, what did you say? I just remember your mom. Like, yeah, <laughs> everyone remembers my mom. And I just, I mean, I became very close with Hassan and Karen, Hassan's mom after post kid songs, right? Hassan, like we were really close and you know, in her loving memory, I just, I just want to say, you know, she, all the moms and including Karen, like they were just amazing parents to be around. Like everyone was great. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I remember Melanie uh, being at your house um, with your sister, Natalie, right? What's her name? Yeah, Natalie. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I remember, uh, <laughs> I remember we were like prank calling people on your phone. Yeah. It was like yeah. just around, just like random memories. It was just I just love how like everyone was just so like just friendly with each other, like even outside of yeah, um, even off. Yeah, outside. yeah, I remember Katie used to come over to my house. I would go over her, her yeah. and would play games. Like I think Katie's what introduced me to like Salt and Peppa. Like I didn't know I any of these. Like sing, like we used to like sing. And she would teach me the songs. It was so much fun. <laughs> and your mom was so your mom was so nice and so chill. Yeah. <laughs> Well, well, it sounds, seems like they all had, they, all the moms had fun together. Um, you know, I think they made a lot of sacrifices because they had to sit there for how many hours every day waiting for us. So I think they owe a big <laughs> applause too. Definitely. Yeah. Another nice picture of uh, Melanie and Chris, by by the way. You guys took a lot of pictures together. Another picture of lunch of Mark is probably, uh, dare I say, ruining the uh the picture maybe it's chris who's being too serious in this i don't know why i'm for us cool <laughs> so so i mean so two people in this picture look really good two are not not taking it seriously so uh <laughs> let's do that that oh, uh, katie, uh, look at us oh katie i, say, I just want to say one thing about chris that you know ever since like i can tell like your personality has not changed and looking back as a kid from like the first day like the one thing that sticks out from all of this from walking on set from day one is how bright you were and how outgoing and hearing your voice even if I didn't see your face on this zoom you have the exact same personality and you were just the first one to jump in and introduce yourself and be like hi I'm here and this is me and you I've always been so shy and so like you know recluse and I am just like I want to applaud you and just you know I just want to point that out and it's just such a a brilliant characteristic and you know just to say that you know we love you and that to have that out there and you know I just remember you being on set and just being that bright star and just being so friendly because that's not something not that I'm not friendly but just being a shy person it's like you know to remember that and you just and still you're the one like leading this charge and just you know being so friendly and sweet and, and knowing everyone's name it just really sticks out so I just want to point that out and say it doesn't go unrecognized yeah, they just kind of jumping off on that, Katie. I, I I really think in my heart of hearts that you know this reunion and all the things I've done with I've done over the past few years, a lot of the stuff like yeah, I, I I really don't think that any of this today, especially, would be possible if it weren't for Chris. Because I mean, he very easily could have just uh, you know shied away after he did the one thing on my podcast, but but we you know we kept in touch just because of that. Uh, 
because he's just so outgoing and, and friendly and willing to share anything. He's an open book all the time. I really admired that. And I, I mean, you know, most people I've talked to my podcast, you know, I, you know, it's, it was just kind of a one-time thing, but uh, you know, Chris has been on my podcast more than anybody else. And I, I think a lot of this to do with that personality. So, so again, I, I think we should, uh, you know, I'll thank Chris for uh, just being so awesome and keeping us, getting us here uh, tonight. So now that uh, uh, that's out of the way, okay, there's that one picture of uh, Billy Biggle where you guys actually got to see him in the flesh, it looks like. And some and uh, some of you uh, seem really enthused about it. In fact, everyone in this picture looks very enthused uh, about it. And then uh, here's the last picture in this set. Um, right there, uh, you got uh, you know, Chris looking off to the side. And was this, does anyone remember if, uh, what was this shot like right before you uh, went on the air? I mean, it must have been. Or did a mom take this? Did a staff member take this? A crew member? Uh, like, would they just take pictures randomly on the set sometimes? We had, we had PR photos shot on the set, but these came from, and we have those, we just didn't get them out of storage in time, but the uh, these are parents' photos, right? These are the ones that Chris provided. So these are parents' pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's, uh, that's all very nice. And, uh, and I actually just remembered there was one other uh, photo here, if I can uh, find, I, I realized that now it's just uh, that I forgot to uh, download it or or, uh, or or get it queued up before uh, before I came on here. If I can't find it, it's not a it's not a huge deal. But uh, I really think that uh, you know the, the PR you did for this was was solid enough that uh, people would uh, would come on and uh, see the show. Because I actually remember. Uh, seeing kids songs uh, uh, on it uh, at TV store, at electronic store. You probably remember the days where uh, uh, where like live TV would be shown on uh, TVs that were uh, for sale. And uh, actually, I think one day I was over there and I just turned all the TVs to PBS because Barney was wrapping up and then kids songs just happened to be on uh, right after this. But uh, well, I, I, mean, I can't find it. I was looking for it. But anyway, let's, let's move on to the... Uh, the part that I'm really looking forward to. I mean, I have clips of uh, everybody on the show uh, queued up. So uh, I've got a couple uh, each from uh, everybody. So let's see, who do I have first? I, I have uh, Mark Jeffrey, first. Jeffrey, yeah. I have to interrupt for one second because yeah. um, I thought that this was only going to be an hour and Bruce and I and Katie have a family commitment that we're going to have to sign off of this and sign off and onto that. Uh, now, um, so we're going to have to say bye. Uh, 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 do I just uh, have any other, uh, uh, say anything in closing before you uh, sign off, before you uh, do that? Yeah, I would just say thank you so much for doing it. You know, this means so much to me to see all these kids. And, you know, earlier I said that we figured out pretty early on that the kids who could handle this were really smart kids. And to hear what all of you have done with your lives and how accomplished you are, I'm just so proud of all of you. I mean, you've all just turned out so great. You know, you're obviously all still gorgeous, but you know, you're also are bright and smart and you know, accomplished. And it really, really, you know, touches my heart to to see you all again and to hear all the nice things you have to say about the experience. And I was thinking about it, looking at all of you guys. I was younger than you when I wrote and produced this show, right? And I'm thinking that you probably, because you say, well, Carol wanted me to do this and Carol wanted me to do that. And you probably thought of me as this person, you know, like I was the producer, I was the writer, you know? And I was so young when I was doing it. And then when I look at all of you guys, that just kind of hits me because you're parents now, some of you, and you know, I started this as a parent and to see you all growing up, sharing it with your kids and being such wonderful young people. It's just, it's, it's, it's just really meant a lot to me. So I hope we do it again. And um, I really, really enjoyed it. And I'm sorry that we have another commitment. I really am. Plus, I've got this new dog at my foot, and Bruce has got our got our one bulldog in there with him, and now I've got the new bulldog by me. And we're keeping them apart till we can get off the call to introduce them, and hopefully, hopefully, they'll all get along great, just like all of you. So, 
Anyway, great to see you all. All right, Katie, you have anything else you want to say before you sign off? I just want to say this was such a surprise, and it's so nice to see you all, and everyone looks so amazing. Yvonne, you look exactly the same. And, <laughs> <laughs> and everyone looks, uh, I mean, everyone else looks amazing as well. Um, and, you know, this was amazing. And I hope, you know, we can stay in touch. And for everyone in LA, as soon as we can get together, let's do this in person. Yeah, all right. sure. I, wanted to, I wanted to do a big Kid Songs reunion at our house. Um, and I was going to do all the kids and all the from all the TV shows and all the videos and the crew. And I wanted to do a huge Kid Songs reunion party on some anniversary. And I was thinking about it and making some notes on it then COVID came along. But, you know, maybe later this summer or maybe it'll have to wait another year. We'll have to see what happens with all this. But I'd love to have everybody over for a big old barbecue and a good time and have everybody in person. I think it would be fun. All right, Bruce, Absolutely. anything you want to say before you uh, get out of here? Chris? Sorry, was that me? Yeah. Yeah, do you have anything you want to say before you uh, sign off? Yeah, I, I watched a couple of shows last night and I was blown away how good they were. Right. They, they, they were really not out fast moving, wonderful shows. They really were. Very nice. Uh, all right, and that's all right. I will let you three go, and uh, you know it was nice uh, seeing you guys. And uh, if we uh, have another reunion down the line, we'll uh, you know hopefully you guys will be able to do that. Do cool. Okay. Again, thank thanks you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. You did for us. Bye. And I have to go. Also, I didn't know it was going to be this long. Well, we got to, we got to have the conversation. Anytime, it was, uh, I love lively. you guys. You're so remarkable. To see you as adults is like, it's the best. I'm so happy for all your success and just keep doing what you're doing. I hope we get to connect again because just listening to you guys and seeing you, it's just fabulous. So thank you, Jeffrey, for having me. I want to close with, I am now going to co-department head Becoming the Ricardos, which is with Nicole Kidman and Javier Bartin nice. doing the Ooh, Lucy and Desi. That's Kidman. awesome. So that's my Very new nice. Shameless plug right there. Congratulations. Yeah, big So happy you're healthy. I'm going to see you. Me too. Thanks, love. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. 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 All right, so, so we've lost some people, and I, you know, I'm not going to go on too long with these uh, clips. I mean, I mean, there's one part of the uh, movie that I was that I was going to do, but I will probably cut uh, cut that from there because we're already like way too long. So I'm just going to blow through these clips uh, real quickly. Like I said before, uh, Mark, you're first up, so uh, don't uh, don't be uh, too embarrassed uh, about it. Um, all right, let's see. <laughs> So, this if the thing plays. Oh no, we uh looks looks like we lost uh, that one. Here, here, I'll play this one uh, for you. This oh. one, you're, trying to be a, a, yeah. you're trying to be a big uh, magician. I love sharing the secrets of magic with children. Well. I think there's a kid here who's dying to share some magic with you. Well, really, we have an aspiring magician in our midst. Our very own Mark Humphrey. Pleased to meet you, Mark. Rainbow Wizard? That's me. Come on, Mark. Show Joey one of your tricks. Okay. I'll attempt to put this quarter to the table. <laughs> very, very good, young man. You know, in today's show, I'm supposed to have an assistant work with me. Would you like to help me out? Sure thing. The Empire intro to <laughs> Skip to My Living. So there's, uh, there's your, uh, oh yeah, uh, right there. Now, were, were you actually a, a magic enthusiast at that age? 
I was, and Joey Magic in, in that uh, clip, he actually was like the magic, like, uh, teacher, person, wizard uh, at my school. And he was at Sierra Canyon Day Camp of the Valley for several years. He actually just passed away last year. Um, oh. But he, he was a really cool guy. Uh, I, and I remember I, I worked to get him on the show, uh, me and my mom. And so that was really cool. Uh, yeah, well, I haven't seen that in a long time. <laughs> oh, oh, so that was, a, that was your, uh, your thing. Very nice. Yeah. We each had like an episode, like each kid had, had at least one episode that was centered around them that was like either an interest of theirs or something like that. And I, I remember that one. I think we each, we might have each gotten two. I can't quite remember. Yeah. Um, so um, all right, this next clip uh, features Chris. Um, and Chris, this is the, uh, the scene that uh, you and I uh, watched, or, or one of the scenes that we watched when uh, we were helping to set this up. The rest of you don't know what, which one this is, but, um, but um, you might know what I'm talking about. It's, it kind of goes to show you what, uh, what kind of show this was, I think. I, this thing will play. I I'm reading from the teleprompter. <laughs> I'm not looking at Billy at I all. Like, I was like, Chris, your eyeline. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that was, uh, I, I know, Chris, I mean, you, you know, we talk about some of your old episodes and you seem like you're like, like really critical of yourself. And so is, is it because you are such a, a seasoned actor uh, these days, or at least you have been? Because uh... <laughs> I'm a seasoned actor these days. That's funny. Um, no, I mean, I, I don't know, I guess, because I mean, because, you know, like, I watched kid songs. So it's like, I'm, I think I'm more critical because like, I'm a fan of the show. So it's like, if I want to be a kid songs kid, I better like represent it well kind of thing. So I don't know, maybe I just put like more pressure on myself, you know, like when I, when I took over for the technical director, you know, I took over Hassan's um, role when he was doing that episode. Like I was like, so like into the, you know, making sure that I did the things correctly or whatever. And, and it was, it didn't matter. Like no one cared. <laughs> like, so little things like that but um like that that stuff really kind of works though in the context of what the show is because like the show kind of has this like kind of pirate radio aspect to it where it's like the kids take over a tv station so it's like of course some things are going to be like a little off and so i always kind of appreciated that aspect of the show yeah all right i just want to show uh, one of chris's top 10 lists uh right here and chris by, by the way before i show this you told me something before uh when we were saying this up uh, your mom always made you clip your fingernails if she knew you were going to do this Yes, because my fingernails were shown. So I had to clip my fingernails very nicely before I did a top 10 list. <laughs> so, so yeah, and, and that, here's, um, here's, one, uh, here's one such uh, clip. And the reason I like this particular one out of all the other ones is because, uh, well, 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 you'll see what he's like at the end. <laughs> Scotland, for your topic today. Now that I found out that I'm Scottish, I want to learn more about it. Are you ready? Well, we miss Janessa all of a sudden. I'm going to present 10 fascinating facts about the Take it away, Chris. Nice graphic, by the way. The top 10 most fascinating facts about Scotland. Number 10. The national instrument, the bagpipe, is actually invented in Asia. Number 9. Hammer throwing is a Scottish sport. Number 8. So is tree throwing. Number 7. Haggis, the national dish, is made of sheep's lung, liver, and heart. Ugh. <laughs> Number six. Scottish men wear kilts, which look like skirts for important occasions. Number five. Families have their own plaid, which is named after them. Number four. Golf is the most popular sport in Scotland. There are 400 courses. Number three. 400? Lakes are called locks. And the number one most fascinating fact about Scotland is that the bathroom 
was invented in Scotland 10,000 years ago. Yes, I did it. I did it. Push not. I did it. And now it's my <laughs> That's why, I, that's why I picked that clip because of how you acted towards the end there. And I gotta say, it's it's kind of a, a window to the uh, the personality that you are, are maintaining even today. Yeah, I, it's funny that they kept that in, like they, you know, like that they showed that side of me. But that's that makes me smile. Thank you, Jeffrey, for digging these clips out of in air it's crazy i hope you have i hope you have hassan and melanie and alexander oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah they're they're coming up uh in just uh, a moment i i see i'm torn between a couple of these clips that i have for uh melanie i think uh, uh I, think, I think i'll show this one because uh, it really shows uh you know how much uh, you guys really had to concentrate on uh you know you know seeing where the where the biggles uh were at all times and i don't think there, there's any scene in the season that captures it more than, than this one Uh, this thing uh... I'm so relieved it came out all right. I can't thank you guys enough for your help. Anytime, Ellie. Don't even mention it. No, really, thank you. I messed up, and I knew Janet was really mad. If you guys hadn't helped me... Melody, that's what friends are for. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Billy, you're late for your sing-along. <laughs> Well, well, I'm noticing a lot of, uh, I'm noticing oh, Billy was late for sing-alongs a lot because he was helping you guys out. So, uh, but, uh, but, but Melanie, how did, how do you feel about, uh, seeing scenes like that when it looks like you're actually, actually kissing a, a character that's not there? You no, know, it's so funny. Like, first of all, my voice is the same. So yeah. when I listen to the, watch these, I'm like, oh my God, my voice yeah. is not the same. Um, but I remember how excited I was at that, you know, I got to kiss Billy. I really got to kiss me. And now looking at it, I think my eye was right on him. I think I did pretty good. Proud of myself. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So, uh, so that's your uh, clip. Um, hey, all right, Hassan. I mean, I mean, there weren't a lot of episodes uh, uh, around you, but this is from the episode where you were, uh, where Chris is actually filling in for you as the as a technical uh, director. Uh, but, um, uh, but I, I think it shows how uh, at, at least at least they portray you guys as uh, uh, being uh, well versed in a lot of uh, areas, including and especially. Uh, uh, well, 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 you'll see. <laughs> yeah, I've had these clips uh, queued up for a while. That's probably why it's taking longer to uh, to show. Hi, Hassan. What are you doing? Oh, this equipment really needed some maintenance. I'm giving it some judgments. You are so good at fixing stuff. Thanks, Billy. You don't seem very happy today. Is work getting to you? No, it's not the work. Do you want to talk about it? No, not really. It's just not easy for me to explain my feelings. I kind of get embarrassed. <laughs> I'm afraid of what other people will think if I tell them what's on my mind. We're friends, Hassan. I would never laugh at you or make fun of your feelings. Thanks, Billy. Yes, have a fun. Yeah, so Hassan, I mean, what was it like doing like a... I don't know if you call it a serious scene, but but a scene where you're like not so upbeat. Yeah, I don't. I, that scene just kind of tripped me out because I'm actually like that in real life. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like oh, kind of reserved, you know, as far as saying stuff. So that was kind of weird, like hearing <laughs> that be like my first line. Um, yeah, but like even like you know, as Carol mentioned like earlier, I'm like a laid back person, like really, you know. Um, Libra, I guess we like stay kind of balanced. So as far as the more serious scenes, I think it wasn't a big transition for me because I'm already operating kind of at that, you know, kind of chill level, you know. Um, but it was it was cool to have that type of range. Um, and I like that, you know, we got to kind of explore, you know, different ranges as far as our acting. Everything wasn't always like, hey, happy skipping down the street. We also had some like depth and that was brought to our character. So yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> All right, uh, Alex, you're up next. So uh, so here's what I got, and I, you know, I'll definitely have a follow up for for this one because because I'll have to uh, figure out just just how real uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, feelings expressed on uh, on camera were, if I can 
Uh, where, where did I find this? Um, here we go. you did are you actually scared of reptiles um not really uh i think part of it was i really wanted to get to hold the baby alec we did a video prior to the tv show called i forget what it's called something a day with the animals yeah talk to the animals yeah yeah and i was supposed to be in see you later alligator and then i got sick and had to leave set so i actually didn't get to hold the baby alligators and i think i was replaced but anyway so i'm not really afraid of them no but i mean i wouldn't seek out like you know holding a snake or anything but <laughs> there was a scene earlier in the episode where you're like alligator so but uh good you're not <laughs> by the way christian ended up uh holding uh one of the alligators in that video so maybe he took your spot i don't know <laughs> Probably. <laughs> well, right, now, now, before I get to uh, to Christian's uh, clip right here, there's, uh, I mean, some of you you might not know. Oh, oh wait, one other thing, uh, Alex. Uh, there was one other clip in the in the following season because you were one of the few uh, holdovers from the uh, the previous season. Uh, we were talking to uh, to Lindsay, who was one of the girls in uh, in, in that season. She she's pretty much unleashing her inner Jan Brady the entire episode because like, she was like jealous of you and all the attention you were getting and you and then you said that uh that, that um that, you know you're always learning your lines at home and then uh and then during the rest of the show you're just on set you don't really get to interact um I mean I know being the host was a lot of work but do, do, do you ever feel like that uh you spend more time away from the rest of the cast you and Christian than uh everyone else I think we sat at that desk a lot but um, we had each other, so we were good. And then we would get to hang out when we had breaks. So we were content. Yeah, we, I mean, I was content. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. It was fun with just with just you and me. I I did I did want to because they everyone would have their their own episode. They're like, oh, that's cool to to do that without the teleprompter. But yeah, I was I was content with with what our job was. Yeah. Yeah, there was one. Uh, there was a Christmas special you guys did, and like, like it was, it was the Christmas video that you were uh, that the that they made previously. But you guys were like setting up the video and then wrapping it up, up and then you two were like, like talking as the credits were rolling, as uh, a lot of shows were doing at that time. You know, talking over the credits. But uh, like I said, now before I get to uh, Christian's uh, actual uh, a kid songs clip. Um, some of you may not know this. I mean, a few of you probably know this, but uh, you know, Christian was in uh, other uh, children's music videos uh, uh, before he was on kids songs. So, um, uh, Christian, you're nodding. I think you know where I'm going with this. But um, you know, I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to show you a uh, a clip of uh, that show. That, you know, even though Christian was uh, was you know just an actor on the show, he actually uh, believe it or not. Uh, he had some he had some pipes uh to him and <laughs> once in a while uh they would uh someone out there would uh would let him uh show them so uh for that is <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> who's that wow Um, <laughs> oh good oh dear. Yeah. that was yeah that was, that was a good bit it, it's funny that was not me by the way um everyone I, i've seen comments on on the internet asking if that was like oh great voice and that was not me i mean my voice is very very low so <laughs> um but you did a very solid bowl cut so that oh, good. Say that. thank you I was, yeah, that I did. Yes, 
Your dance moves made up for it. <laughs> yeah, my, my cousin had those uh, Mickey's Fun songs tapes growing up. You watched them constantly. So, I mean, I actually yeah. realized a couple years later that you were one of the uh, the kids in there. But uh, And then a few other uh, people who were in the kids' songs videos were also uh, uh, in those. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, uh, Tiffany Burton, who was 68 you, Alex, she was in uh, all three of those videos. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but, but, but just real quickly, uh, Christian, what was it like making those, uh, those uh, videos at Disney? Those were really fun. I mean, uh, just like just like the kid, these kid songs videos, it was it, we were just having a lot of fun um, and learning the songs and learning choreography with them. Um, I mean, that was just that was the gig, and uh, you know, I couldn't I couldn't complain. It was it was just fun for the most part, and it didn't even feel like work. Um, with those Disney ones, it, it was it was funny because you know you see the the characters and you're you're rehearsing with with people that are the characters or not you know are standing in for the characters <laughs> uh but yeah th those those are fun as as much as as these were were very memorable yeah all right so uh, so for your uh kid songs club i mean i mean i regret to say i mean there weren't uh like a whole lot with you that that stood out but but i really felt that, that i cannot conclude this uh have this reunion go by without me sharing what i think is this one clip so so just to set the scene i mean you, you might remember this uh but uh just for the guarantee that there's this whole episode where there were alex in the dumps the entire time because everyone she thinks everyone's forgotten her birthday what she doesn't realize is that um, yeah, everybody's actually playing a surprise party, but then they they start getting concerned about uh, you, you know maybe her feelings are getting hurt because nobody said anything about it. So obviously, at some point, somebody had to be the one that breaks the news the news to her that she was being surprised. And who better to do that than uh, her her co host Christian? Because that was um, because like you say, you guys worked uh, together so often that uh, you know it couldn't have been anybody else, right? So, uh, so this is, so this is, uh, you know, probably, uh, it, cause this episode felt like there's a lot of drama building, like building and building and building. And then all of a sudden it, it led to this. Please load. Hopefully this didn't, uh. Hey, I'm So that was, uh, I thought that was really cute. Now I have to ask, um, Alex, I probably know the answer, but I'm going to ask anyway, was uh, was this like based on anything? Was it like actually your birthday on set that day? I really, I don't remember, but it was cool a few years back. I think it was like my, I don't know, 29th birthday or 30th birthday or something. Um, some of the kids songs, kids, including Christian showed up and, and surprised me and came to my party. So it was kind of cool. Well, yeah. so it's a precursor to uh, something that would happen in real life. Is, is that right? Yeah, my real birthday, like a few years ago, which was awesome. But I don't really remember on that episode. Like, I don't think it was my real birthday, but I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. So, so Christian, I mean, um, did you really, did you and uh, Alex really have a? I mean, you guys talk about working together all the time, but uh, was it? Uh, did you guys feel like you had a really close relationship because you know you were in front of the camera together the uh, the entire show? I think so. Yeah, I think uh, we that was that was kind of a big part of the audition process. And even with with Alexandra being a part of the videos prior to the television show really helped. And and like uh, like Alexandra said, we went we went everywhere. And so I think there was there was definitely a chemistry between us that it really worked um, when we did the television show. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. Now, uh, you know, before we get into some uh, closing thoughts here, Alex, I, I did watch uh, a few of the uh, episodes from the following year, and there's there was one line that you uh, actually had uh, 
uh, that you actually had here that really stuck out to me. I think it's just because of where I'm from. At one point, you're talking to your uh, co-host then, uh, the Aaron, I believe it was, because um, you're introducing uh, a video that's to do with horses, I want to say, um, or at least uh, the Wild West. And you're saying, uh, you know, wide open spaces, rolling hills, clear skies. And, and they ask, are you talking about the Wild West? You're like, no, I'm talking about my home state of Illinois. <laughs> now, I understand that, you know, you know, I'm from Chicago, you're from St. Louis, but, and so, I mean, we probably have different perspectives on, on the states, but um, uh, 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 would you agree that Illinois is wide open spaces and rolling hills and clear skies? Oh yeah, it's so beautiful. I mean, I've lived in <clears throat> LA, excuse me. <clears throat> I've lived in LA since I was nine. Um, so I've spent more time in LA than I have in Illinois, but actually this past year during COVID, I bought a second home in Illinois. And so I, I want to have my son, you know, spend a lot of time here close to family and be in the open space. So that um, those words really remain true to me <laughs> so much that I actually moved kind of part time. <laughs> well, well, whenever you come back here, hit me up and uh, you know, maybe we can uh, be in the flesh and assuming COVID has uh, gone by the wayside for the most part. So, I mean, we, we can't really travel anywhere out of state anyway, so um, that'd be fine. But um, all right, I mean, I was gonna get to this list of what was true or false, but you were like, like way over on time anyway. So I think we're gonna let's wrap it up. I'll, be, I'll email you guys later on to see if it's true or, or false and then I can get the answers for myself. But um, why don't we just go around the uh, the room and uh, just offer some, some closing thoughts. Uh, Mark, why don't we start with you? Uh, well, like I said before, this has been really cool to see everybody after all this time. Um, my beard notwithstanding, everybody really does like look the same. It's really crazy just to see everybody like uh, as adults now. Um, Chris, thanks so much for putting this together. I, I got a Facebook message from Chris and I, I just look at my phone and I see Christopher Aguilar. I was like, oh my God, uh, <laughs> this is crazy. You know, I am. Um, I was just helping my mom move recently and I actually, I wasn't able to grab them, but I, I'll see if I can get a hold of them. I did find some pictures of uh, we did a cast party at the end of the show at my house. Um, and I found some pictures from that and that was quite a trip to see all that, like us, like in the backyard, hanging out and everything. Um, but no, this was a really cool experience that I had as a kid that, you know, getting to spend week weekends with you guys playing games and, doing this show. It felt like going to camp every weekend. So it was a really cool thing. And I'm glad we all got to reconnect and I hope we can stay in touch. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, for putting this together. No problem. Hassan, what about you? Uh, yeah, same thing. I mean, uh, I think this was just incredible, especially what's going on right now, just, you know, in the world, uh, this couldn't have come at a better time. Uh, so I really want to thank you, Jeff um, and Chris for arranging this and, and going on the, the wild goose goose hunt and you know tracking down everybody uh yeah i mean kid songs definitely just one of those memorable experiences that really define my 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 childhood um and even to this day i want to say like last month uh someone found me on twitter you know another fan of kid songs you know and just kind of telling me like how much the show impacted them so uh it's it's funny how i take that experience in that regard uh, for granted so um these are nice reminders, you know, that we were very lucky to have, you know, gone through that and, and made these connections. And uh, yeah, just so happy to see that everyone's all happy and healthy and, and well, and uh, hope we can continue doing this. Uh, Christian, why don't you go next? Just to echo everyone, it, it's, it's very, it's, it's great to see everybody, everyone's faces and and like everyone said, Chris, Melanie, Jeffrey, thanks for, for getting us together and, and just seeing everybody, uh, you know, being in the, the situation that we're in, it's, it's just kind of nice to see some faces and, and uh, some old faces that they, they look the same. It's crazy. Yeah, like Marcus is so right. <laughs> it's just you guys all look the same and it, it's great to, to see everybody and catch up and uh, it would be great at some point, hopefully, Carol, you know, once this COVID thing kind of settles down, um, we can all get together and see each other in the flesh. Yeah, maybe find me out to LA. No, uh, it's your name. <laughs> uh, Alex? Um, I think it was just a really great way to grow up. And I'm so appreciative to all of you for all of our memories. And thank you, Chris, for reaching out and 
and Jeffrey for setting this up and Melanie. <laughs> it's great to see your pretty face too. <laughs> and Mark, hopefully we can work together. <laughs> You're a lawyer. I always need lawyers for my clients, so we'll see. Hit me <laughs> up. See you <laughs> By the way, one other thing. I, I did always admire how uh, how you guys would sometimes compliment Chris's writing or, or maybe bash it because it was just like so corny at times. But I just wanted to throw that in there. Uh, but Melanie, what do you have to say? Yeah, just what everyone else said. I'm so happy we all reconnected and that we did this today. Uh, Hassan and Chris, I just have to tell you real quick. My sister texted me because you mentioned Hassan, my sister Natalie. Do you guys remember we did The King and I together after kids yeah, saw the play together? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my yeah, God. My sister says City, hi. Uh, yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah, so my sister says hi. But yeah, it's been great reconnecting with all of you guys. All look so amazing. And let's hope COVID ends soon so we can all see each other in person. Indeed. I want to meet all your guys' kids. Alex, I got to meet your kids. Christian. <laughs> everyone. <laughs> Mark, you look like an Thanks, evil uh, booby boss right now with that cat. <laughs> uh, all right. And uh, but Chris, you can go last. Oh, man. I have to go last. Um, uh, I just, um, oh, I'm going to get emotional. It just warms my heart that. Um, that we were a part of such a positive show, you know, just like, it just didn't, it was, it was, um, it was such a positive show, such a good influence for kids at that time. And for us to be the ones to be in it. Um, I'm so appreciative to Carol, to Bruce. Um, and to each of you in this room right now, like um, I look up to you all so much. Um, knowing where you are today. Um, Hassan and I randomly bumped into each other at a cafe one day and, um, and I immediately put him in my YouTube video because I was literally like working on a YouTube video while he came in. So um, mm -hmm. little, little things like that. And then for someone, a Kid Songs fan to comment on that video, I mean, it's just, um, and it was only three months of our life. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, not many kids get to experience something so um, special um, for just for three months and then to carry on a legacy that, you know, after I didn't know all that stuff that Carol was talking about. So just that sort of like how it was sort of a, for, a forerunner of like of kids music videos and things like that for us to be to be the ones to um, to carry that on uh, was great. And then also just to organize this reunion with um, with Melanie and Jeffrey. Jeffrey, you did such an amazing job. I'm impressed. Like you really did your homework. Um, I'm so glad I know you. Uh, I'm glad I'm friends with you. Uh, Melanie, you, you feel like a sister to me now, which is so cool, you know? Um, and then for me to find Mark and Alexandra and Christian just through social media alone shows how remarkable, like the remarkable time period we're in currently um, to be able to reconnect like this. So just know that I do, um, I do care a lot about each and every one of you. And I hope that you're in my life now um, till the end and, um, and I'll get to see you again in person. You gave me all emotional. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Oh, love you. I don't know how I'll be able to top that, but um, I will say, you know, thank, Thanks to all of you uh, for so very much for, for being a part of my childhood because because yeah, you really were um, during this time when this this five year old kid watching on PBS who was actually actively looking forward to kid songs being on every day at, at five o'clock or or when he got home from from preschool or, or kindergarten um, it, you know going from that to you know getting all of you back together and most of the cast back together um, it's. So I, it's definitely one of the best accomplishments, one of the biggest accomplishments in my life. So I never would have thought back in 1994, uh, when I was just watching you through a screen, that I'd be reuniting you in a way that didn't even exist and that I would be the one to do it. And I didn't even think that uh, I would uh, certainly not be an inspiration to uh, to a Chris, at least. But um, that's that's exactly what's happened. And you know, I'm very lucky. And I think um, I speak for all Kid Songs family. I say thank you all very much for uh, for uh, you know being part of this 
really innocent period in our lives. And you know, my only regret is now, now that I've gotten to know you guys is that, you know, I, I was too young to be a part of it, but then again, I wasn't in acting, so <laughs> I don't think it would have worked out anyway. Uh, but uh, any, any event, uh, yeah, you guys uh, stay on for, for just a moment so we can say a proper goodbye, but right now we're going to, uh, you know, cut the, the stream here. And uh, thank, thanks to all of you for watching. Um, I hope that, uh, you know, for those who didn't get to see this live, uh, I'm, you know, it's good all the same. And uh, I guess the only thing to say, uh, the only thing to say goodbye to um, appropriately is see ya. See ya. See ya. See ya. <laughs>